All right, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Umu. Um, firstly, I would like to say thank you to EDEC and also Ms. Umu uh, for inviting me for this morning's training on Microsoft Teams, a digital workplace hub. Um, so I don't know why I'm always very happy and uh, whenever I get an invitation from EDEC, uh, I just enjoy doing workshops with them. So a big thank you to them. And also a big warm welcome to all our participants uh, for this morning's uh, workshop um, or seminar or webinar, uh, whichever form you may call it. Um, so we're gonna be uh, with each other for about three hours. And I noticed that uh, we have a mixture of uh, people coming from University Malaya, within University Malaya, um, lecturers, and also we have participants coming outside of University Malaya as well, right? Um, so very warm welcome, just a, li a little bit of introduction. Um, I'm Donnie Adams from the Faculty of Education. And one of my passion is on using educational technology such as Microsoft 365. I also do Google education training, uh, but um, if you want to compare the both, uh, my preference will actually be on Microsoft Teams. So we are in this um, situation where uh, we will have to decide. Um, um, okay, just before I go on, I think Juliana, there is sound. Huh? Maybe can you check? Um, can you check your laptop and uh, and see if you have the volume button unmuted? Siti, you can hear. Can you all can you all hear me? Uh, can you all put in the chat? Can you all hear me? The the rest can hear. Yeah. Okay. The rest can hear. Um, so maybe Siti and and the rest who can't hear. Uh, uh, maybe you can try the unmute button because sometimes that button we 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 mistakenly press uh, unmute the the volume button in your laptop otherwise if it still doesn't work you might have a speaker problem uh, use a headphone uh, use a headphone uh, that might help also all right okay the rest i can see that is clear i can hear clearly wonderful all right um, so we are in an era where we are forced uh, to teach online uh, we are forced to teach remotely uh, remote learning we call it and there's a lot of uh, information about which is the proper tool to use we are so we have uh, four main tools uh, that we commonly hear of uh, number one is google meet and google meet is one of the most popular um, applications in um as well and the reason being is because our um mail is built on and developed on a platform in google right so we have google drive as part of our um mail and also we have google meet as part of our um mail and the uh, uh, um mail is very much uh, the features and the interface is very much similar just to a normal gmail right so that is one of the reason why uh, google meet is one of the most popular ones that we use um, currently and we also have zoom uh, and Zoom seems to be uh, known as one of the most user-friendly features uh, where the buttons are all easily accessible and, and all. Uh, so we have Zoom. And another one we call Cisco WebEx, probably the least popular among the big four. Uh, Cisco WebEx is there. And now you have Microsoft Teams, right? So each of these application has its advantages. Huh? I won't talk about so much about the disadvantage. I'll talk about the advantages. Uh, each of these application has its advantages. And uh, Microsoft Teams seems to have some features that has a more standout compared to the other three platforms. And I will share with you um, what are these features that is applicable to two groups of people today, uh, which are us educators, uh, those who are teaching, and those administrators as well. So you get the best of both worlds. So I will look, uh, we will discuss about this uh, for this morning, yeah? All right, so this will be more or less the outline for this um, morning to afternoon. So we're gonna start today uh, by looking at Microsoft Teams, right? Um, so what is Microsoft Teams? What is Microsoft 365? I will give you a little bit of uh, introduction to 365, but uh, most of the time uh, this morning will be dedicated to using Teams. So if you can see, I've dedicated at least one and a half hours uh, to using Teams uh, because it's just so many features, so many things you can do uh, using Teams. And it's a really cool application. Um, I will show you. It's not because I'm a certified trainer I'm telling this. 
uh, because I've used it personally myself and I tested all four platforms. Of course, this base is uh, this is based on our own experiences. Uh, each of us have mastery and experiences uh, differently on four platforms. But for me personally, in my opinion, um, I prefer Teams, uh, even though it looks a bit more complicated than the other three platforms. OK, and we will have a break uh, from 11 to 11.15, uh, just a short break. Uh, then 11.15 to 11.45, we are going to look at Microsoft OneNote. Um, this is also another very cool application. It's similar to our diary, only thing in a digital form. We were going to look into this and then we're going to have a, a possible break. I will say possible break. Huh? 11.45 to 12, we have to see um, how much time we have. Right. If we can have a break, we have a break. Otherwise, maybe a shorter one rather than 15 minutes. And then we're going to go straight into uh, uh, creative presentation with Microsoft Suite. Many of us here perhaps will not have heard of Microsoft Suite. So what is Microsoft Suite? Uh, it's a very cool 3D -ish, um, uh, application that enables you to show presentations. Uh, uh, so from my experience of uh, training uh, lecturers and students using Microsoft Sway, somehow after the training, they have forgotten what is Microsoft PowerPoint. Uh, that is the impact of Microsoft Sway. They have forgotten about Microsoft PowerPoint. What I mean by that is they have never start using Microsoft PowerPoint anymore because they all they all are using Microsoft Sway. Uh, that is how impactful it is. We will look into that uh, and see what is so uh, good about this application that people have forgotten what is Microsoft PowerPoint. OK, and just to assure you that um, you are in good hands uh, this morning, I have obtained all the necessary uh, qualification and certification from Microsoft. Uh, and these are four uh, main badges, right? OK, let me just activate this. Yeah, you have this badge. You have this badge one, two, three, four. And this badge is on Microsoft PowerPoint. This is on Word, Access and Expert. So each of these you will have to complete. This is a two days full day training. This is two days full day training, two days, two days. So all of this you will have to complete and you will be able to get this uh, batch. This is the most crave after batch uh, and the most difficult one to get. So you have to get all these four uh, before you get this big one. So you have the small pins. Huh? So if you go for face to face training, uh, we, we are encouraged to pin uh, on our jacket huh? when, when you go. But um, since this is virtual, there's nothing to pin. Lah, huh? it's, 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 I only can pin it on the PowerPoint. <laughs> OK, so you have this uh, five pins here and it's not just two full days of training. Uh, you will have to sit for an online exam. So each of these has a two hour online exam. Um, it's uh, evangelated by a Microsoft exam evangelator, uh, appointed person. So the person will come and evangelate the exam there. Uh, and you have to, uh, if you pass, you get the cert. Um, and if you don't pass, you can try again maximum three times. After that, they will tell you perhaps um, you can forget about it and uh, try for the next version, which is uh, 2019. Okay, and as part of that uh, uh, batch, you also get a nice certificate. They post it to your house. These certificates are all uh, part of the module. You have uh, the batch and also you have the certificates here. And this is the grand one, uh, the Microsoft Office Specialist Master Cert, where it's listing all the modules that you have completed here and you also have a verification code so it's not something that is very easily duplicable eh? uh, you you need to uh, 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 get it properly certified you get yourself properly certified and people can verify you this is the code here and this one is actually a gold gold plated eh? is 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 actually a real gold plated the real set has a gold plated this is a scanned version and you can see how nice and clear it is it's a scanned version but the actual one is actually uh, gold plated i won't say gold lah, otherwise i will cut it and probably sell it already okay it's, it's gold plated okay um there is a question in the chat how much is the pricing okay for each of this module that you will have to take okay um uh, each of it costs about six to eight hundred ringgit six to eight hundred ringgit per module right uh, so you have to complete all four for you to get the uh, microsoft office uh, specialist master right 
Um, so if you are interested in this, there is a link um, I will I can share with you uh, um, and you can register for that. And also this is something very much obtainable, uh, something that is very much achievable. Um, this is what we call Microsoft Innovative Educator. Uh, you just have to sit through a course for about um, uh, half an hour and um, complete a test. Uh, I wouldn't really say it's a test, it's a quiz. And the quiz is based on uh, whatever you have learned for the past half an hour. Uh, so if you pay careful attention, the quiz is fairly easy. Unless you skip the modules and the videos, uh, you will not be able to answer the quiz. And once you answer the quiz, you will be able to get this uh, certificate of recognition. Uh, you are a certified Microsoft Innovative Educator. So this is very much, uh, if you are an educator, um, you are very much encouraged uh, to go for this. Uh, Microsoft Innovative Educator. I also can share the link to you um, if you are interested to pursue this. Uh, this is free. Uh, this is free. Uh, there's no costing for this, right? And there's also other things that you can take um, um, uh, as part of the training. You can take a course especially on Microsoft Sway and you will get a certificate like this. You can take something on Microsoft OneNote and Teams. These are three of the certificates I'm showing um, as part of the training today. Actually, have, there's, there's a lot more that I have, lah, but no need to show the whole thing. Uh, this is the three that is relevant for today's uh, training. So you can also um, obtain some info, uh, certification like this. right? So if you're interested, you can uh, let me know. I can share with you the details. OK, so this morning uh, we will go into uh, Microsoft Teams and here I term it as one platform to rule them all. Uh, so those of you who are fans of uh, the Lord of the Rings, uh, if you, uh, you have seen the movie The Lord of the Rings, uh, one ring to rule them all. Uh, this is one platform to rule them all, right? Okay, and what is so unique about uh, Microsoft Teams is when we look at this picture, we can see there's a computer screen and we can see there's a mobile phone, right? Um, so just imagine um, if you like Google Meet, for example, or you like Zoom, for example, uh, which is video conferencing tools, right? So you need to on the Google Meet, you need to on Zoom, um, enable to dial in and, and have a video conferencing like what we are doing now, right? So imagine Google Meet or Google Zoom and what we are used to uh, uh, messaging application called WhatsApp. Right, so we use WhatsApp very frequent now. Telegram is growing in popularity, but we are using WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp is still the most popular as compared to Telegram at the moment. So if you were to compare the features of WhatsApp in terms of messaging, um, attaching files, sharing pictures, sharing audio, and uh, enable you to uh, do a video call, enable you to, to do a voice call, uh, all the features that is available in WhatsApp, right? And you have all the features that's available in Google Meet and Zoom. Now, Microsoft Teams combines the best of both worlds. So you have Microsoft Teams that can be used as a video conferencing. You also have Microsoft Teams that can also be used as a messaging application. So if you have Microsoft Teams installed and you have done all the necessary procedure, you can use it just like a WhatsApp. So you don't have to have a separate WhatsApp group. You can use Microsoft Teams. It's able to send messages and share all the necessary features in WhatsApp exactly uh, in Microsoft Teams. Yeah? So here you are able to communicate. You can chat, can have meetings, can have calls. And what is so different uh, between Teams compared to Zoom, Meet and WhatsApp? Here you can integrate many applications. So you can design this platform um, according to your needs, exactly how you want it, right? You can customize, you can extend and, and link a lot of third pet, uh, party applications. And this eventually enables you to work with confidence because you have everything at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, so when I talk about uh, integrating apps, when I talk about customizing apps, uh, this is how it looks like, right? So you will see that these are some of the um, applications that you might have heard of. Right, the common famous applications. Um, some of it is very much like Flipgrid and a uh, few others are very much used in um, uh, uh, teaching and learning. So these kind of uh, applications can be easily linked to Microsoft Teams, even Adobe Acrobat, uh, you can easily link to Microsoft Teams. So you can customize it to be very unique to your personal needs. Huh? So we were gonna look into this, I will show you how to um, do it. And also you have an integrated calendar application like this, right? So when we look at Microsoft Teams, we are imagining that 
is a combination of uh, 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 video conferencing capability plus mobile capability. So it's, it's two in one actually, all right? Okay, so let's dive into Microsoft Teams now and see what um, are the features and what can be done for Microsoft Teams, all right? Uh, so before I proceed further, I just like to share with all of you, um, I'm looking at you now, uh, this is one screen. At the side of me on the right, um, I will occasionally focus here. So that doesn't mean that I'm not paying attention to you. I have a bigger screen here, right? So if I look here, means I'm looking at the second screen, right? Okay, so as what um, our organizers, uh, ATTACK has mentioned, Ms. Omu has mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, put it into the uh, show conversation. Huh? Um, we try to make it simplify. Like, we are given comments to teams and say, why show conversation? Just put chat. Like, everyone knows the word chat, uh, but it seems that they are trying to work and until today, they are still working on it uh, to rebrand that. Huh? So you can put it into the chat or what is labeled is show conversation. So if you have any questions, you can put it there. All right. Okay. So now let's dive straight into Microsoft Teams. Um, I'm going to share my screen first. All right, so you uh, you should be able to see uh, my screen now. All right, so um, you know one one of the uh, one 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 of the uh, most common uh, questions that we get uh, for uh, um, online teaching and learning is basically is can you see my screen? <laughs> uh, can you see my screen? Can you hear my voice? Okay, so these are some of the most uh, common thing uh, that we hear. Okay. Just a moment, uh, let me just, okay, let me just go to here. Okay, so I will su suggest that um, you you work with me, uh, you work with me. Oops, the sharing has gone off. All right, I think you are able to see now the, the, the screen. Okay, uh, so you can work with me, you can click with me, you can uh, do it together with me and you have any questions, you can put it into the, um, chat box. So I think as of now, we have about wow, 159. Huh? Okay, 159 uh, with us. All right. So first thing you do is um, some of you might not have access uh, Microsoft. Um, so you can um, access Microsoft online in, in this way, right? So you go to Microsoft online, just Google Microsoft online, right? And then here you have uh, this link so you can click this link Microsoft 365 login okay so I'm going to click this one so Google Microsoft online and you have the first one Office 365 login right so those of you who have never logged in into uh, Microsoft um, 365 online you might get a box prompting you to um, uh, put in your username and your password so you can put in your username and you can put in your uh, password. The password is similar to your mail. Huh? Um, so those of you who have never logged in through Microsoft 365, um, the email is different. Huh? The email is different. You have 365. The only difference is you add 365 there. All right. So if you go to um, here, uh, for example, UM 365 account, if you, are, if you want more further details, huh? you want more further details, you can go to UM365 account. You can click this one, right? And this information will be useful for you and for your students. So you can see how to access Office 365. Uh, this is the details for staff and this is the details for students, right? So your students want to access 365. These are the details and your uh, for staff, um, those who are administration and educators, you can access it through this. So you can visit uh, Microsoft online as what I showed you just now, and then you can sign in to your account. OK, sign in to your account. So this is the username at 365.um.edu.my and then the password is similar to your UM mail. Right? So username and password is similar. But only thing is our email for staff is at um.edu.my. So you have to add 365. Uh, you have to put 365 in front, right? in the username and then you put the password similar to your email. So once you have got this, um, you'll be able to access this portal. OK, so I'm going to stop here now. 
um everyone clear so far uh, can you know you have beside the show reaction you have uh, the buttons there uh, you can put a thumbs up yeah you can put a thumbs up so there's thumbs up there's heart there's clap there's smile and there's also raise hand right so if it's good so far you can put that uh, there so i know that you are good yeah <laughs> uh, otherwise you can put it into the show conversation huh, if you have any questions all right okay so now we have logged in into uh, Microsoft 365, right? So this is the interface. So if you're using it for the first time, um, you might notice there's nothing, uh, it's, it's empty on your screen. So it's okay, don't don't get worried about that. Um, mine, I have few things here is because I use it all the time, right? Uh, but in your case, if you're not using it, you're using it for the first time, you might get an empty page, so it's fine. Um, so what you can do is um, on your far left here, you have few of the popular applications within Microsoft 365. So the one that we want to focus is Teams, right? You have Teams here. So this is one we are going to focus, okay? If you if you find, can't find this bar here, you can click this grid and you will be able to see Teams here, okay? So if you want to know what are the labels of all this, uh, you can either hover over it and you'll come out the name or you click the grid and you are able to identify. Okay, so what you're going to click is you're going to click Teams. Okay, so please click on Teams now, right? And once you click on Microsoft Teams, um, you are going to get to an interface something like this, right? So you're going to come into an interface something like this. It's going to load and it's going to come to an interface something like this, right? Now, this is the way to log in into Microsoft Teams for those within the UM community. Eh? If you belong to University of Malaya, you have free access to uh, UM365 uh, account, right? Microsoft 365 account. Now, those of you who are outside of University of Malaya, you can install Microsoft Teams separately. So you just go to a Google search and put install Microsoft Teams. And um, if it's already installed into your desktop, you can still use the application, right? Now, this is for those who are outside of University of Malaya. So those of us who you uh, have working colleagues and uh, those of you are administration today, um, you have working colleagues, encourage them to use uh, Microsoft 365 uh, platform. Those of you are educators, encourage your students to use this. So maybe they're not very familiar. You have to just show them a little bit, uh, then they are able to use it. Yeah, And I will tell you why, uh, why you are highly encouraged to show your um, students and also your uh, friends or in the administration um, department how to use it okay so now when you go into microsoft teams this is the interface you're going to get um, don't get too uh, worry about all this that you see here uh, because i use teams very extensively so you can see there's a lot of things here right um, if you are using teams for the first time you might not have many things here Right. So the first thing that you want to do is um, you need to create a team, right? Create a team. So the the application is called Microsoft Teams, and uh, the one of the first step is to create a team. So sometimes this can be confusing, yeah, because it's using the same team, uh, 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 is using the same name, uh, Teams, and uh, create a team and Microsoft Team, right? So you have to first create a team and this option is available right at the bottom here. You can see join or create a team. Some of your applications, this button is not at the bottom. This button can be at the top right, right at the top right. Uh, you will see a purple button join or create a team or a white button join or create a team. OK, either way, it's fine, right? It's either at the top right or at the bottom, right? So we're going to click join or create a team. All right, and so what happens is you have two main options here. Okay, don't don't worry so much about the rest of these things here. Um, just focus on these two. So you have create a team and join a team with a code. Uh, so I will share with you later what is this join a team with a code. Uh, we will just focus on create a team at the moment. So this is one of the first things that you want to do when you use Microsoft Teams is to create a team, right? Uh, this is similar to creating a WhatsApp group. Uh, you, if you use WhatsApp, you want to create a group, right? Uh, so this is very similar. You want to create a team, right? So now click create a team and you have a few options. Some of your accounts and those who are very basic accounts, you will only have uh, two, 
and you only have two. Eh? Uh, mine, I have four because mine is an advanced account. Um, so those of you who are basic, you will only have two. If you have four, it's okay. Eh? Don't don't <laughs> don't worry. Eh? If you have four, that's a plus point. Okay, it's a good thing. So the one that we want to focus on is class. So you can click class, right? Um, and here is where you create your team, right? You create a team. So here you can give if you are a teacher, uh, lecturer, you can give. Uh, uh, particular course code, for example, or you can put your course name inside. Or if you're an administrator, you can put your department's name, for example, or any any other task that you have, right? So in this case, I am going to put my. Okay, this is just an example. Huh? My cool team. Ah, okay, my cool team. So this is my team name, huh? my cool team, right? Now. Description, you can leave it empty. Uh, not many people is going to bother reading it anyway. So you <laughs> you can leave this description empty. It's optional. Huh? So you don't have to type anything. So my cool team, click next. Right. And Teams is going to create uh, the group for you now. Right. So now you have at this stage, you have two options. One is students. One is teachers. Right. So you have students and teachers. So if you have other lecturers who are teaching in the same course as you, um, you can add their name here, right? Um, and then here you can also add your student's name. Now, if all your students and uh, colleagues who are having Microsoft 365 account, it's kind of simple to just find their name here, right? So for example, um, I'm going to find Umu's name. So I'm going to type Umu and you see that her, her name comes out quite simple, right? So you can type Umu's name and, and it comes out. So because why? she has a 365 account, right? Um, so those who don't have a Microsoft 365 account, you can also add them, okay? And what I mean by those who don't have 365 account are those who are having Gmail, um, Yahoo, having Hotmail. Um, so these are outside of Microsoft emails, yeah? So you can also add them, right? So for example, I'm going to add my Gmail, which is called donny.adams at gmail.com, right? But you notice what happens. There's the word guess here, guess, right? So earlier, if you use a 365 account, there's no guess. So what is the difference between this and guess account? So guess account, you have uh, limited functionality. So if I'm going to add this person as a guest, that means those who are using Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, uh, that means they are, you are not adding them through their 365 account, or if they don't have a 365 account, you have to add them as their Gmail, Yahoo, or Hotmail, and they will be registered as a guest, right? They'll be registered as a guest. So what is the difference between guests and a 365 account? Guests, you have limited features, right? There are a lot of things that you can't do as a guest. So as much as possible, please add your students and your colleagues using 365, uh, Microsoft 365 account. Don't add them as a guest. Huh? There's a lot of things that you cannot do as a guest. So as, as that is why in the morning, uh, Miss Umu informed to all of us, um, please access your 365 account. So if you're accessing using a guest, please quit and access using 365 because there's a lot of features that is not available for guests, right? So you can still add them as a guest, that's fine. Uh, they have some basic features. For example, they can join meeting, they can ask chat, but a lot of the other features is not available. So the basic ones are there, so that's not so much of a worry. Yeah, uh, Absolutely, if only necessary, you add their guests. Huh? Otherwise, please try to uh, um, add their 365 account. Now, please take note also, uh, this is something that is very important. Yeah, um, All of us here, uh, most of us here are having Microsoft 365 account, right? And this 365 account is under University of Malaya. Now, let's say that uh, among us this morning, uh, we also have guests from outside, um, outside of University of Malaya joining this workshop this morning, and they also have Microsoft 365 account, right? but their 365 account is going to be still considered as a guest, right? Because they are a guest in our organization. So my account is using 365 at UM, right? So their one may be 365 at UPM, for example, or 365 at UKM, for example. So if that's the case, even though they are using Microsoft 365 account, 
they are still considered a guest because it's not within the same organization. All right. OK, I see there's a question in the chat. Uh, not really. Uh, uh, you have, is it men? Microsoft Teams is only suitable for internal usage uh, within the same organization. Not necessary. Yeah. OK, not necessary. Uh, you can also use uh, Microsoft Teams um, to invite. Uh, I mean, other people from outside Microsoft Teams can also join. It's, it's not just limited within uh, the same organization. Of course, uh, those who are using the same uh, 365 account within the same organization has better benefits uh, because they have the full features, right? Uh, but uh, those who are guest account, they have limited feature. Yeah, but that's what I mentioned, Ho, the limited feature is sufficient, right? They are guest account, but it's sufficient to do a lot of basic things. So you don't have to worry about that. OK, uh, so Tengku says for guests, can we make them as our team member or we can only invite them during meeting? Yes, you can put them as a team member. That's what I'm doing now. Um, so if I put donny.adams at gmail.com, it's going to be my team member, but it's going to be a guest. Uh, so not necessarily just during the meetings. Uh, they can be in the uh, group, uh, in the group itself, the, 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 my cool team that I just created. They're going to be in there. OK, OK, I think Dr. Zahir has posted something. Please bear in mind that his personal emails via is not allowed. Organizational email is allowed. OK, so there's uh, some information there. Yeah? Uh, 365 usage huh? uh, on uh, UM policy. Yeah? So those of us are from UM, you want to take uh, note of this very important uh, uh, info. Yeah. All right. So now, um, for example, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to add my email. So you can. This is how you add um, students. You, this is how you add your fellow co-teachers inside so you can uh, proceed next. You have a next button once you add your members and here you're going to come to uh, Microsoft Teams, right? So you're going to get something like this and you can see this is my group name. Welcome to my cool team, right? So at the bottom here, uh, sorry, if you're using it for the first time or you don't use it extensively, yours is going to be probably at the top. Yeah, um, so mine is right at the bottom here. My my cool team, right? And you will see that there's something called general. Yeah. OK, so what is general? General is basically you are already in uh, interface here. OK, let me just look at the chat. How about meeting interview session? Are we going to use the same way by creating a team like you showed just now? Who is going to be the student and who is going to be the teachers? OK, um, Anita, if you're talking about uh, OK, there I will talk about meetings later on. Yeah, uh, there will be um, a section on meetings later on and I will address this. But when we are talking about uh, for me, what I define as meeting is basically um, you're going to meet face. Uh, you're going to meet in a virtual platform with your students. OK, and you can meet within the same team or you can even create a calendar separately. Uh, it's not a problem. I will show you later. Yeah, uh, but you can still have meeting within the group that you have just created. I will show you the functions later. Yeah, and uh, teachers can also join in there. OK, um, Umu has said live event. Yeah, OK, so Umu has shared huh, uh, about the conference that um, edX have organized. Yeah, all right. So there is a way um, which you can create meetings within teams. I, I know that there is a lot of difficulties when you create meetings and some people outside cannot join. I, I have heard about that, right? But there are some ways, uh, there's some technicalities involved here. I will show you an example where you will not have any problem if you create a meeting later on, yeah? Okay, uh, and when we come to the meeting section, I will show you. Okay, so now we are here. Once you've created your team, you are going to get this interface, right? So my cool team and you can see there's this purple button down here. New conversation. So if you click new conversation, it's going to act exactly like a messaging application. So you have all the necessary uh, things you need here. You can share file attachment. You have emojis here, you have GIFs here, you have stickers here, you have um, stream. So if you have any videos in Microsoft Stream, some of you maybe have not heard of Microsoft Stream. Microsoft Stream is very uh, similar to YouTube. 
Ah, uh, similar, similar to YouTube, right? Uh, so it's a video uh, sharing platform, right? So you can link the video here to Microsoft Stream, and you have other application, and you can simply just put a uh, normal chat here, yeah. Okay, so Haryana says research cluster also organize a forum involving right, the live event function really help. Yes, wonderful. Nice to have some uh, positive comments here. <laughs> okay, right. So we keep the momentum going. Yeah. Okay, so you can have a, just a normal chat here. Now, this is something at the top here you want to bear in mind. So you have posts, you have files, you have class notebook, you have assignment, you have grades, and then you have this plus sign, right? So what is this plus sign all about? So if you click this plus sign, right and you are able to see that these are all the applications that can be possibly linked to microsoft teams so as what i told you earlier uh, microsoft teams enables you to link uh, with third-party applications so you have um, all the third-party applications you can customize it and link it to your microsoft Teams. and this is personalized to you right it's personalized to your um, account so here you can see that these are some of the most uh, famous applications that are being recently used, uh, frequently used here. And they also have all the other applications here. So if you're not very familiar with all this, you can slowly explore, uh, for example, LUM apps and Magix, uh, PMS Co. You can Google it and find and you can experiment on it. Uh, and if you like it, you can link it to your um, um, Microsoft Teams. Yeah, So you even have Miro board and many, many other applications. So a lot of this is uh, also available for teaching and learning. And there are also other application that is also available for administration. Yeah, So you can explore all this, but these uh, top here are the most frequent. So you can see that what is the most frequent things that we can relate to. You have Microsoft Word, you have Excel, uh, we, you, most of us probably are familiar to Google Forms, right? You also have Microsoft Forms, you have OneNote, you also can link to a PDF, PowerPoint and all this. So these are all available for us. Uh, this is how you customize. So you just have to click the Add button and you can add any of this application and it's going to appear here at the top, right? It's going to appear here at the top for you. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Um, any questions about uh, what we have covered so far? Uh, in terms of creating the teams, um, in terms of um, uh, initiating conversations, posting messages and all this, and also in terms of adding third party applications. You all have any questions on this? Okay, no questions. Huh? All right, let's go to the next part. Okay, so now in the group that you have created, yeah? Okay, no question at the moment, okay. So in the group that you have created, my my cool team, right? So you have the general channel here. Now you can also manage your team, right? So if I'm going to click this uh, three dots here, right? And you're going to get some options here, right? Um, you want to check out manage team. So what happens when you click manage team here? you are able to see who is the owners of the team, right? So this is something like the WhatsApp admin. Huh? So the admin of the group, huh? the owners of the group is like the WhatsApp group admin, right? And these are the members of the group, huh? members of the team that you have um, added them in. So when you add people inside your teams, all their names are going to appear here, right? So this is the list where we check out who is in our teams, right? Um, here, if you have uh, guests outside of uh, UM, for example, or any requests you have to join your team. That means something that uh, you didn't invite or maybe you have provided a link and people want to come and join in is going to appear here as well, pending request. So you might want to check in case you have shared a link to people and they are, want to join your team uh, by clicking that link, it will appear here in pending request. So you will have to approve this. Yeah. Okay. But there is a better way um, rather than uh, you sharing a link. There is another easier way. I will tell you later. Now you also have channels here. I will show you just a slight uh, bit in a while. I will show you what is channels. Now this is something that you want to look at settings, right? So settings here, you have a team. You can pick what team you want, right? So this acronym MC is actually uh, model after your group name. Uh, so you have already created my cool team, right? So it's MC, right? So they have 
put a theme here MC. So if you want to change the theme, uh, you want to put some nice picture here, you can also do so, right? You can change the theme here. Now, if you see in terms of member permission here, uh, what can your members do? That means what can your group members do? So you can also control. Uh, either they can allow and uh, you can allow them to link as many applications as you want to the group that you have just created, the team that you just created, or you want to minimize that kind of aspects. Um, owners can delete messages, give members option to delete messages. So there's so many things that you can do here. Um, allow members to create channels. Um, so this is members, uh, you are the owner, uh, you're the admin, but these are members inside your group, what they can do. So if you want to limit some of their functions, you can also do here. Um, here, guest permission. Uh, so those who are outside of UM, for example, they're using their personal emails and all this, they are automatically considered as guests, right? So these are some of the guests uh, permission. Once you have already created uh, teams, you will get, but you can see that this is already predefined. Eh? It's already predefined here. Okay. And here you have team code, team code, right? So what is team code? This is a code that you can, um, Share okay. Uh, Tengku, you are asking a question here. Uh, how do we add our class? Is it one by one? What is mean by students on current academic year? Okay, no problem. Uh, Tengku, I'm showing you right now. Right. So this is something that you want to give uh, your colleagues and your students uh, to join the teams that you just created. Right. Um, so how are we going to do that? You have to generate a team code. Right. Generate a team code. But please bear in mind. A very important message here. Can you see here? Guests won't be able to join with a team code. What is the meaning of this? Means that those who do not have a UM365 account, um, so that means those who are having Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, or other 365 account, they won't be able to join. They're considered guests, right? And they won't be able to join with a team code. So you cannot use this shortcut. Uh, for those who are considered as guests, right? These are only for those uh, with, within UM who have a 365 account. So those who are within UM have a 365 account, you can share with them this theme code. And I will tell you where to put this theme code, right? So first you click generate, right? And you're going to get this code here. Now, this is something that is useful if you are in the class um face to face once you create a group you can straight away show your student if you click full screen um here you can straight away show your student so everyone can see big and nice projected um in the class but at the moment we are virtual so you don't need to show so big lah, huh, that people get scared okay so uh, something small like this will do okay f uh, 14jx you use so you have this theme code right so you want to copy this theme code now answering what uh, Tengku has asked, how do I add uh, students in my class? Is it one by one? Uh, this will be the shortcut. Uh, this will be a shortcut. So you just give them this team code. They can add it into their teams and they will join your group. So now I have the team code. What am I going to do? Um, if you see your option earlier this morning, we created a team, right? So now you have another option called join. Join a team, right? Join a team, right? So now if I click join a team here, join a team with a code. So you have create a team, join a team with a code. So this is where your students enter the code. Okay, or your colleagues enter the code, right? And join the team. So once they join the team, they are able to enter your group, your team that you created called My Cool Team. Now this is for those who are having a 365 account. Those who are not having a 365 account, that means they are considered as guests. How do I add them? The same way how you created your group earlier, you can click the more options here and add member, right? So add member is you add them using their Gmail, Hotmail or Yahoo Mail and all this. So you can click this and click add. So for example, uh, Donny.Adams, don't forget to click add, yeah? <laughs> there are some lecturers, uh, they said, I, uh, you say click add, uh, I add, but then my students is not added. Then after I was thinking, why, uh, what happened? I thought it's some technical problem and I was cracking my head, you know. Then only I noticed that they forgot to click the add button. They say I already add and then I keep close, right? Then they say my student never add, never add. Uh, I was thinking what actually happened. Uh? So after 
trying to crack the the situation then finally i told can you record a video and and show me how you actually do it and then when they showed me then i noticed that they have forgotten to click the add button right so once you click the add button then the name appears down here then you click close all right okay so now um to answer shy foods is Siswa male UM considered within the organization or they are guests? Okay, so uh, Umu has responded there. Right? Okay, so please bear in mind there is two different uh, emails. Yeah, so if I go here, so if I go here, you can see that for students, uh, you see for UM male, uh, our staffs, you know, we have uh, username at 365.um.edu.my, right? But for access our 365 account, you have to add the number 365 at the front, similarly to students, right? So they have their siswa, siswa.um.edu.my, but uh, they have to add 365 just after the word siswa. So similar to UM uh, staff, you have 365 here.um. For siswa, they have siswa. 365.um, right? So this is the email, the username you, you want to add, but usually we don't do it this way uh, because you have the team code. If they access using the Microsoft Teams, you have the team code. So you, you just give them the team code, ask them to log into Microsoft 365, this page, right? And go to Teams, right? So you have to teach them. Uh, uh, you have to teach your colleagues and teach your, your uh, students who are not familiar in the first class. Tell them that access Microsoft 365 online. Uh, put your username here. So the, sometimes they say, I try my username, I try my CISWA, it's not working. So you please bear in mind, did they put 365 or not? Right? They have to put 365. Right? Sometimes they say, I put, I try, I try, I cannot. Because why? Uh, sometimes they don't use 365. They are using CISWA.um. Right? They have to add 365. Right? So use the username and use the password similar to Siswa. If they cannot remember the password, please ask them to reset the password. Then they access 365 online, ask them to go to Teams. And from there, you add the team code, then you will not have any problem. Okay, uh, Miss Chong say you want to share the recording. What is this you can access to Microsoft? Yes, the recording is available. Huh? So as what Miss Umu has shared, the recording is available. So don't worry. Huh? Uh, in case you forget or something, yeah, don't worry, okay? Uh, or you cannot follow the full session, right? Okay, so now um, I'm done on um, um, joining a team, uh, joining a team. So I just showed you information how to uh, monitor permissions within the teams, uh, what access is given to your members, and also um, how to add members, uh, and also how to uh, add members using a guest code. Uh, using a guest code. Okay, so that's what we have covered so far. Okay, now next one we're going to look about, I'm uh, going to talk about is creating channels, right? So here you have groups, right? Now you have channels, right? Channels. So here you can see that the first channel is called general, right? Uh, next, this general means that anyone uh, who has been added to your group, my cool teams, they can talk, they, they can post anything, they can share anything, they can write any message, anyone can access here. Now, the next thing you want to do is uh, perhaps you want to venture into looking at creating channels, right? So I'm going to create a first channel and I'm going to show you how. So you click the three dots here and click add channel, add channel, right? Okay, so now you have channel, you can create the first channel. So what is the use of channel? Channels is basically subgroups within Microsoft Teams. So you have a group which is called My Cool Team and all your members are inside. Now, or your students and your colleagues are inside. Now you want to pay subgroups, uh, subteams. We call in teams, the right term is called channels, right? So you want to create channels within your teams. Now, what is the use of channels? Um, if those of us who are educators, right? Uh, one of the best things about channels is you can divide students according to group, right? So, for example, group one, right? Group one, 
Okay, so group one, for example. So you can create group one, group two, group three, group four. If you have group works within your course, right? So you can create group one, group two, group three. Or another option you can do is you can even create according to the topics. So maybe, for example, introduction uh, to teams. Okay, uh, week one. Okay, week one. Week one, you have um, introduction to teams for example so you can create um, specifically that means each subgroup each channel is only going to be dedicated to a certain activity so for example you can create channels according to group group one group two group three group four or you can even create channels according to topic uh, week one week two week three okay so i'm going to give you two examples so let's say that i have created my group and i want to create channels uh, subgroups uh, which is called channels i can even do it according to week okay and then you just click um privacy here just take note of this word privacy here so you have two options here you have standard and you have private now the privacy here means that this channel that you're creating is accessible to everyone on the team so whatever group members you have added in my cool team anyone can view this one so if you are an educator and you're creating channels based on topics every week this will be the privacy setting you want right now if you are creating based on group group one for example right so group one means that only certain uh, students are involved in group one not all right not everyone is involved in group one so maybe group one you have about uh, five six students involved in group one now this is the setting privacy you want to change it to private so if you notice private is written what accessible only to a specific group of people within the team right so if you click private group one you click next now this is where you can add the students so maybe five six seven students you can add all their names inside and then you have a channel that is created so for example you have group one and you have a padlock here so from an administrator point of view you can also create channels okay so basically like for example minutes of meeting for example or minutes of meeting management uh, so minutes of meeting um, for um, the whole department members Chontonia, or minutes of meeting for the management so management minutes of meeting mungkin only the management team uh, can read the minutes of meeting right the rest cannot read so you want to put a padlock which is the private channel right and uh, maybe the next one is minutes of meeting for everyone so it's up to you actually how you customize just giving you some um ideas yeah okay and then here i think there is uh there is a question here what is the limit number of channel uh what what do you mean by limit uh? do you mean the number of people uh, within the channel or or do you mean how many channels can be created Mm, Irene, maybe you want to specify. Okay, uh, someone also raised the hand earlier. Yes. Um, sorry, Dr. Doni, for interrupting. Yeah, uh, please go ahead. From uh, Miss Nur Shahira, just raise your hand just now. Yeah, yeah. Miss Nur Shahira. Shahira. Nur Shahira Binti Adenan. Yeah, Miss Shahira, can you can you uh say uh, can you say what's your question? Is okay. Maybe she suddenly pushed the rice button. She accidentally uh, clicked the rush button, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me just answer the question by Irene. Yeah? The number of people uh, for channel. Uh, um, number of people for channel. Mm, I don't. I, okay. Thank you, Dr. Zahid. There. Eh? Let me see this. Um, let's look through together. Okay, here, number of members in the team, you have about 25,000 uh, there. So number of channels per team, so you can create about 200 and this includes deleted channel. Okay, number of members in a private channel, okay, about 250, all right, if you were to create uh, private, yeah. So these are the information. So can you please um, save? Can you please save that uh, information? You want to bookmark that link. Huh? Uh, this link is quite important because you have an overview of all the information that you need here. 
Right, so please bookmark. Ah, banyak ni. <laughs> yeah, that's why Teams is one of the free application that you can um, add as many members as you want. Uh, uh, I mean, large number of members. Ah, huh? large number of members. So if we have many students per group, do we have to add them manually or can generate code uh, like Teams? Okay, for channels you have to add them manually. Yeah, uh, for channels, macam group satu, uh, you have to add them manually. Yeah. Right, so as you create the channel, you add them manually. Yeah, um, the teams group, my cool team, you can give them a code. All right, uh, Farhan, is it okay? Boleh, yeah? All right, so okay, we move on. Yeah, so okay, good. So now this is the teams, huh? so you can create channels. Okay, so we have just covered how to create channels and what are the functions of channels, right? So this is up to you, yeah? It's up to you on how uh, you want to create uh, the channels and what is the functionality within the channels, right? So kalau you create a private, if you have created a private channel, you will see a small padlock here, means that only members of this uh, channel uh, can comment, share material. So whatever files, you, you will see that you have posts, Post is basically whatever that you chat inside here and files here. You can add as many files as you want. And here you can even add um, other things here, right? All the other applications here. And this is exclusive to this channel, uh, exclusive to this channel. Uh, so you can customize it. Uh, each channel has its own unique features. So some uh, teachers, for example, educators, lecturers, uh, they want to see what did I teach for a particular topic, maybe week one introduction to teams, for example. So everything that is talk about, discuss uh, materials in week one, they upload there, right? There was one of the institution, um, I just recently gave training uh, to one of the institution, I don't want to mention the name, lah. Uh, they have an LMS platform, right? They have a learning management system, something like Moodle uh, we have for Spectrum. Right. So after giving them the team's uh, training, they, they have some specific questions they asked me beforehand and um, delivered the training. They have stopped using the LMS. They have deleted their LMS. They don't use LMS. They say we want to use Teams because Teams seems to be having everything that uh, we need here. You can upload the materials and everything. So I'm not telling you don't stop using uh, I'm, I'm not telling you to stop using Spectrum. Huh? Please bear in mind we still need Spectrum. OK. And Teams is supposed to be a complementary feature uh, to Spectrum, not to replace Spectrum uh, because we still have um, uh, uh, the use of Spectrum and our KPIs are very much linked to it as well, right? So please bear in mind, uh, don't 100% go gung-ho on uh, Teams and forget about uh, Spectrum and you're going to have trouble later when uh, you want to look at your KPIs, yeah? Okay, so now, um, you have created a channel, right? So now let's look at um, some options here uh, in terms of creating a meeting, right? So now you have created your, uh, uh, what is this, a group you call my cool teams, right? You created a team, my cool team. So you have general, you have private now, right? Now, how do we initiate meetings, right? How do we initiate meetings? Now, there is a shortcut towards this. Uh, if you've already added all your team members inside here, right? Uh, it's uh, just a click of a button. Uh, if you go just to the top right here, you have meet, right? You have meet. So you can click meet, right? And it's going to launch. Uh, most of you uh, would have gone through this uh, window in the morning, right? So here you can give your uh, meeting a name, for example, and then you can join now so when you click join now a message box is uh, this is group one sorry go to general right go to general here right and you click meet right click meet and you are going to see meeting in general so you can name this meeting okay for example meeting one or whatever topic you have whatever class uh, meetings or whatever management meetings you have you can name this and you can click join now right so when you join a message box is going to appear so the rest of your members just come and click join 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 finish right so this is something that is just at a simple of a uh, click button this is once you have created a group okay a group and all your members are inside so tak payah go and create a link and 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 tell them that you know um 
Okay, so Dr. Zahir has posted there, yeah. So uh, the the team is working on integrating teams and spectrum. Ah, so your KPI will be coming from both platforms. Okay, so this is good news uh, for me as well. Okay, <laughs> okay, because I use teams a lot, but at the same time, I I cannot forget spectrum. So if both of them can integrate, nice. Okay, uh, so you have um, okay coming back to the meeting. Right. So you instead of creating a meeting and sharing the link to your um, members, they you can just tell them, OK, what time are we meeting? So, for example, 24th of June, we are meeting at 11 o'clock. Right. So instead of creating a meeting, you just on your teams and then um, join click uh, meet here. OK, and then everyone can click the same join or oh, somebody else have already clicked the meet and you see a message box here. You just click join. No need to create another one. So it's very simple, right? No need to create links, thousand links and a waste of a lot of time, right? Now, this is something within your teams. Huh? That means my cool team. This is unto member my cool team. Huh? All your members call. For example, you have 10 people in this teams group. Then 10 people can access this meet button. OK, this meeting that you're creating within here, huh? the meet button. OK, just bear in mind that is number one. Yeah. OK, now. Uh, some of the problems that is been faced by team user is they say when I create a meeting, um, other people cannot join, right? Other people cannot join my meeting. They are getting some error messages, right? They're getting some error messages. So you need to bear in mind, are they added into your group, right? If they are not added into their group, for example, I have my cool team, other supplement member, 10 members inside here, right? And now you have a meeting. Now it's suddenly you want to invite somebody else. Kata, okay, kita ada meeting, this, this meeting here, come and join. Uh, yeah, that is the problem because they are not a member of this team. So they are going to face a lot of difficulties there. So please bear in mind, if you want to create a meeting, right, within uh, the group that you have created, that is only accessible within the members within your teams, right? If somebody else who is not yet a member of your team is going to face the Difficulty. Now, how do we overcome this? Uh, another shortcut that I will show you is this. OK, I will go to Glender. OK, this is option A. Yeah? Option A is creating a meeting within Teams. And this option A is the members must belong um, to your team, right? Yes, right? Uh, no, no, uh, Gita, uh, the host can record the here. Whoever clicks the meet button is the host, right? So they, they are the one that can uh, record the meeting. So if you want to ensure that you are the hosting, so please click the meet button earlier then. Uh, be one of the earliest one to click that, right? Okay, so just bear in mind, option A um, uh, is to create meetings within your team, within your group, uh, within your team. So for example, my cool team, you want to create meetings, only members can access that teams. Now, if you want to invite other people who is not a non-member, you're going to face a lot of technical issue. So another option, another option is this is option B. Option B is you can create meetings through the calendar. So you have calendar here. Click calendar. All right. So you get something like this uh, calendar here. All right. Now you want to create a meeting through here, right? Calendar. So go to new meeting. Create, uh, click new meeting, you will get this window, right? So you can put a uh, meeting, meeting on uh, introduction to Microsoft Teams. Okay, contohnya lah. Okay, meeting on introduction to Microsoft Teams, right? Now you have all your attendees here, right? So here, uh, uh, usually I, uh, this is not as user friendly as Google lah. Where kalau you ada your email, you just copy paste all the email and put here and all is going to come out. No, uh, uh, this is not as user friendly as Google interface. You have to type the email uh, one by one. You cannot just copy and paste it. It, it doesn't really work. Yeah. So you have to uh, type the email. So for example, now um, what I will suggest, this is one of the things that I do is, is up to you. Lah, and it works absolutely fine for me. It works like a charm, right? So meeting on introduction to Microsoft Teams. So option B is you want to have meetings uh, with absolutely anyone. So guests pun can access this. Those who have Microsoft 365 account outside of UM also can access this. Those who have Microsoft 365 account within UM 
also can access it. That means almost flawless, almost no problem, right? You can use this option, right? So this is a meeting, yeah? So meeting on introduction to Microsoft Teams. So what I would suggest is, this is something that I do. I will just put uh, my email here. Okay. Um, my guest email, huh? A at gmail.com. So I'm just, I'm just going to put my guest. So it's going to come out invite here, all right? Invite. Okay, so you put all the necessary date. Okay, so maybe 24 June 11 uh, to 24 June, maybe um, in at 12.30, one and a half hours. Okay, don't worry so much. Uh, other lecturer, they, <laughs> uh, she had my mobile number. She called me. Uh, she said, uh, my meeting I said uh, will in at uh, one and a half hours. Tapi meeting nampaknya lebih lama, dua jam. Uh, it's going to be longer, two hours. So what do I do? Uh, the meeting is going on. Can you help me? Can you change? Uh, so don't worry. If the meeting goes on longer, it's not going to end. Uh, they, it's not going to cut. So you just carry on, don't panic, yeah? So this is just anggaran, just anggaran, huh? it's just an estimation. So 12.30, okay, now you see that the rest all, you don't have to do anything, right? So what can happen now, I'm going to click send. Okay, notice that this is the message box here, right? It's empty, right? The email is empty, so I'm going to click send. Okay, so what is going to happen now, when you click send, you will notice that your meeting has been created here, right? Meeting on introduction to Microsoft Teams, and then you have your email. So now if you double click this, um, you're going to come back to the same uh, settings, right? But notice what is here. Microsoft Teams meeting, join on your computer or mobile phone, right? Uh, mobile app. So you have click here to join the meeting, right? So what is this? If you see, I put my mouse over this, there's a very long link. That is the meeting link. That is the meeting link for you to join. Right, a very long link. So now, if you were to add all your guest member, let's say, kalau ada seratus orang, hundred people joining your meeting, you don't want to waste time uh, typing all their email one by one. Hundred emails here, right? It's going to be a total waste time. Even ten students also, you have to look at the paper and uh, maybe see some software, uh, see some screen, and and uh, just type their email. So what you're going to do is, um, this is what I would suggest. You just right click, copy link, right click, copy link okay or you can even uh, uh put, go to here go to microsoft word or you have your whatsapp uh, you can just share the link here okay i give you an example yeah okay so here for example this is my microsoft word right so when you paste um here when you paste your link it's going to look something like this very long right the link is very long and very pain huh? pain to the eye yeah? so you, you just imagine you send this link in the whatsapp group huh? terlalu uh, terlalu uh, panjang eh? too long the link so you can even shorten this huh? you can even shorten this so you can use um, applications such as uh, tiny url okay you go to tiny url you can google tiny url okay? and you have tinyurl.com shorten that long url into a tiny url right so you can click this all right and then here you can paste that long link that you have here so just copy this whole thing and paste it here and now you can brand this huh? so it's going to be tiny url uh, maybe you can put meeting 101 for example make tiny url Oh, ini ada orang sudah booking. So, any names, ah, you just customize and see if anyone has booked this. Oh, so banyak orang dah booking dah. Meeting, meeting 101, okay, maybe 1A1. Let me try 1A1. Something unique lah. Ah, there you go. So, tak ada orang dah booking this one. Meeting 1A1. So, this will be your new URL. So, kalau kita paste here in your Microsoft Word, it's short. Short, simple and straightforward. So, this link long one has been converted into a short link now this is the link you can share uh, to your uh, uh, meeting participants and they click this link they are able to join your uh, microsoft teams meeting so you can put uh, you can just copy this uh, message here okay and then you can go to your microsoft word okay and then you can just put this one join uh, then you have the teams meeting finished so you just copy this and share it in your whatsapp uh, web or you want to, uh, if you have a class on Spectrum, right, you can even link this meeting to Spectrum.
right? Uh, so it's something that is very easy. So you just click and they can link. Now you don't, uh, one thing about educators, uh, they have, uh, one thing I've come to find out is, uh, they are constantly creating new meeting. And uh, let's say that you are having a, a, a meeting on a particular topic. Um, for example, I'm teaching a class, uh, introduction to Microsoft Teams, a course, uh, introduction to Microsoft Teams, for example. And every, every, you know, you have 14 classes per semester, right? So every time you have to uh, uh, um, teach every week, right? So in, you don't need to create a link, a new link every time, right? Uh, that is, uh, I, uh, what I've heard is many are creating every week. Okay, week, uh, this week, class the hub is fine. Okay, I, pergi, uh, I go to Clender and I create another link. I go to Clender and create another link. No, 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 you don't have to do that, right? Only one time, satu kali is enough already, right? So this link, so you can copy and link it to Spectrum and each time your student just have to click that link and they can join the meeting. So you can recycle the same link again and again and again. So same thing for administrators. If you're having a, a monthly meeting, weekly meeting, or even daily meeting, um, you can just create one time like this and they can continuously join the same meeting using the same link. So you can recycle it. No need to every time create me yeah, a link, create, link, create, link, go to Clender. It's a waste of your time. Okay, so I finish about um, creating a meeting using option A within Teams and uh, within your group members and now option B, uh, a general meeting that is accessible by everyone, uh, not necessarily those within just your group members. Okay, so any questions here? I'm going to stop here. Okay, I see that mm, there's some questions here. How can attendance or participants be captured during meeting? Okay, it's always kept. Uh, the calendar is set in the channel. Okay, so, all right. So, here, attendance of participants. Okay, so, Marini, um, later I will show you the interface of, once we start a meeting, I will show you the interface, uh, how you can uh, download the attendance. You can download attendance into an Excel sheet, right? I will show you that uh, feature. So, I'm going to stop here now. So, we have covered how to create a meeting, option A, within Teams, option B, outside of, uh, teams using Clender, uh, using the Clender. Okay, so any questions? Tak All good? Hi, how to prevent other participants in the teams to create uh, different meeting links? Other participants in the teams to create different meeting links. Uh, you mean there are students in, in your class uh, creating different meeting links, is it? Is it creating different meeting uh, in, in your group, is it? Okay, let me go to the settings here. Uh, Anida, you have a question, please go ahead. You can, um, you want to unmute your mic or you want to ask it through here? Oh, okay, can. Chong, no problem, yeah? I will show you that. Okay, um, on... How to unmute the microphone? Oh, okay. Um, maybe... Let me see, uh, is the edX stuff there? Shai? Nora, Nora, are you there? Maybe you can help. Uh, I'm here. Oh, um, oh yeah. <coughs> Anita, you want to... Okay, um, boleh unmute mic sekarang ke? Anida can. Can you unmute and see? Okay, Anida, you can ask your question. I think you should be able to unmute now. Or you can put it in the chat, it's, it's fine. Uh, okay, doctor, can I ask the questions now? Ah, yes. Anida. Okay, just now you share about the meetings to creating a meetings, right? Uh, yeah. My question uh, is the participant of meeting uh, when they get the link, they going to join the meeting straight away, or is it uh, me, for example, as a secretary can control so that only 
certain uh, certain attendees join into the meeting? I mean, is there any waiting area? Yes. Or waiting platform? There is. Uh, I will show you, yeah. It's called the waiting room. I will show yeah, you. Yeah, I need... I need to know that in detail. Can. Thank you. <laughs> can, can. Well, we need to make sure only the right people join the meeting. Huh? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, because actually we wanted, for example, like interview session, we will call upon one candidate one by one. And then ah. I heard that effective from 28th of June, Google Meet uh, has limit of hours. Is it true? Uh, yep. The, as of now, is is not say effective 28th of june that has been um the uh that has been the 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 news from the beginning of the year it's not effective that is what they ha they have been extending they have been extending and extending right so the latest uh one that they have extended uh, i think probably in january or february they have extended until june right but maybe maybe uh, uh, as of now the deadline is 20th of june maybe when it comes closer to that they might extend again uh, we don't know but as of now yes it's on the 28th of june uh, the the meeting hours okay um all right so let me just go here okay meeting room will be good for viva okay i will share a little yeah okay so now uh if i if i copy this one if i copy this link and i i go and just paste it in the url like this all right you are going to come to a launch screen you're going to come to a meeting launch screen right so all we got to do is just open microsoft teams open microsoft teams right and you're going to get this uh browser here and then you just click join finish right some of your participants uh, will be telling um i cannot join uh so about this button here uh, the button here is not in purple right you you cannot it's gray out so one of the reason is for example um this one they have not selected any of this option other option number one option number two option number three right right option number one number two and number three right so if they cannot select any uh if they have not selected any of this option this button will be gray out they only got cancelled they cannot join so please tell them uh to select uh, uh one of this option so always uh suggested to just do, jangan kacau all this lah, uh, room audio and all this just computer audio uh, if you're uh, a lecturer just use computer audio take this and click join uh, right so if you if you come to a screen like this where they say i cannot see anything i cannot join as uh, you have to check whether they are the tick this one though. so they are the tick usually not a problem yeah you can straight away join okay so now once what happens once you have joined the meeting huh? you click join now what happens you have joined the meeting okay so you are going to get an interface something like this right so you're going to get an interface you are in a meeting now so all of us are in a meeting now right okay so now these are some of the basic features of teams so if you can go at the top here you can see these are show participants. So if you click show participants, um, you are able to see the list of participants. Wow, well, already 186. Okay, so 186 are online now. Yeah, so okay, 186 plus us, right? Uh, these are the organizers, the presenters, right? So these are the list, a uh, list of participants that is with us this morning. Uh, you can see their names here. Now, um, here you have an option. You can see there's this three dots right the uh, three dots here right three dots so if you click here um they will have more options because this is a webinar for men eh? so for a meeting you have more options here for example ah yeah this one so you can see you can allow microphone um you can mute participant you can allow camera there was one lecturer who asked me uh, uh my students all when i have class they all off their camera is there a button or is there any way where i can uh force open their camera uh, that means I click that one, the camera will open. Oh, tak boleh, macam tu. That one is, <laughs> that one is privacy. Yeah? Kalau, kalau student uh, or uh, the person behind is not in an appropriate form to appear in public, then it's going to be a very big problem. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we don't have any button to force the camera to turn on. Uh, uh, you can um, uh, have this option, but the person has to approve it. Uh, the person has to approve it. So this one, kalau uh, pin, if somebody is presenting and you want the whole audience to uh, focus on that person, you can put pin or you can put spotlight as well. And then um, here you have make a presenter or 
you can even remove from meeting. Make a presenter, they can join this group. Lah. Make a presenter here. So they have um, more like a admin options yeah? here. And then remove from meeting is you remove them all together from the uh, meeting, right? So these are some of the options you have here yeah? uh, for participants. So some of your participants might join the meeting and they tap mute the microphone. Uh, uh, so you tell them, uh, tolong mute microphone, tolong mute microphone, and maybe they don't know. Uh, they don't know to mute. So here you can help them to mute. So you just click this and help them to uh, mute, mute the participant, mute the microphone. But in this case, I see that uh, I cannot mute because the participant is already muted. Huh? The microphone is already muted. Okay, so you have the list of participants. Next, you have show conversation, right? So conversation is basically the chat, right? You have the chat uh, box here, right? So now the, the chat box is uh, show conversation. So you can type all whatever chat that you want. Uh, most of you have already been using it. But one of the things that I told you earlier this morning is, uh, what are the other features that Teams have uh, that Zoom and Google Meet and uh, Cisco Webex uh, don't have uh, in particular? And these are some very useful features, uh, especially for student engagement uh, or especially if you are an administrator, you know, you want to make your meeting a little bit lively and not so uh, military style. OK, you can do so. So these are other options. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so Ulya says for weekly meeting, just create new calendar and reuse. Yes, use the same link. Ulya, don't waste your time creating the uh, meeting in this one. Then I go in the calendar and create a new meeting again. And then I go and create, oh my God, how many links, right? So by the time, by the end of the year, uh, kita mungkin have thousands or maybe millions of links that has been created. Uh, so please, please don't do that, right? If you're going to use the same, uh, if you're going to have meeting with the same group of people, uh, or you just use the same link. Huh? So, for example, you're teaching your students on a weekly basis. Just create one link and put it into Spectrum and you can recycle that link for the rest of your life. OK, so that's how we do it. OK, uh, OK. So now in Microsoft Teams, you have other options such as this, right? You have format, you have emoji, you have GIF. So I will encourage that um, in as part of student engagement, you can use all these things yeah uh, so for example as an educator yeah as an educator um, i want to see whether my my students are engaged are they listening to me during class or are they on lazada or are they on facebook or shopee or, or netflix right so i want to know are they with me are they um, uh, listening to what i'm teaching right especially on a virtual environment so what do i do is um, you have this emoji here right now you notice that this is not just uh, an emoji right uh, the emoji has its own labels. Now, if I take my mouse and I hover over emoji, you will see it comes out a name called Angel, right? Now here, you will see it comes out in love. Okay, here you see it comes out as star eyes, right? So I will ask my students uh, some questions, for example, and then um, I will tell them, okay, do you all understand? Uh, do you all understand? After I finish explaining, do you all understand? L give me an emoji on star eyes. Uh, so they have to go, hey, apa benda star eyes? Huh? Uh, what is star eyes? They have to go through and say, oh, they have to search through lah, one by one. Oh, star eyes. So they click star eyes and then they put the emoji. Then this way I know that they are listening to me. They are following what my instruction is, right? So this um, application, you your emojis, for example, okay, is not um, available in Zoom and the other platforms, right? So here in Microsoft Teams, you can use um, emoji, okay, as part of your uh, class, right? Okay, I this Tanku is asking auto mute for all participants is only applicable for webinar presentation mode, or can it be done via normal meeting? Yes, you can do it through normal meeting also. I I will show you, yeah, I will show you uh, uh in the in the calendar. I won't really say it's in the calendar. I will say in the meeting platform. Huh? Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's through the um, uh, option A, which is through your group, or through the calendar. Yeah? So you can have various function I will show you on the settings. Yeah? So you see, you can play with the emoji. Yeah? You can play with the emoji. Uh, so uh, the labels are here, right? That's one way. Now, the second thing that you can use Teams that is very useful, right? Okay, I'm going to ask all of you a question. Okay, I'm going to ask all of you a question. How do you feel this morning? Okay, how do you feel this morning? Can you put your answer in the chat? How do you feel this morning? Can you put your answers in the chat? Okay, are there 100 over here? <laughs> So maybe not all hundred over. Eh? So uh, I just need a few responses. Only. Uh, Nanti hundred over here. Uh, just a few, few responses. Okay, I have 
feeling great. I uh, use text. You can use text. Uh, use text. Uh, you type now. Okay, use text. So you have feeling great, good, good. Okay, use text. Use text. Awesome. Good. I just need another few more. Happy, great, happy, feeling grateful, energy. Okay, nice. Okay, we're going to stop here, right? Um, okay, we're going to stop here. Now, this is something that uh, you can do using Teams, right? Now, if you notice that these are the comments, I ask a question as a teacher, I ask a question uh, as a, uh, 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 to your students. How are you feeling today? And your students have responded, right? Uh, with this response, right? Uh, great, excellent, good, good, great, and looking good, feeling good, feeling wonderful, feeling gorgeous, um, energized, and all this. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to ask the students is, now look at all your friends, huh? all your friends um, who have given the response here. Which response that you like the best, right? Which response you like the best? Now, give me a thumbs up. So, how do you do that? If you just hover over the comment, for example, good, you can see that there are some reaction points here. So, you can put a thumbs up, you can put love, you can put uh, uh, laugh and all this. So, look over your friend's comment, which one that you feel is more relatable to you. Okay, for example, looking good, feeling gorgeous. So, I'm going to give this a like, right? So, now if you notice that in your comments, uh, all that has been uh, posted, uh, all the chat has been posted here, you can easily uh, ask your students now, give me a reaction. Give me a reaction to whatever that has been commented. Uh. So, now easily as an educator, I can see, oh, right. So, I see that there are two people who like this comment. So, now if I'm going to scroll down, right. Okay, so some people are still posting. Yeah, you can see all the reaction. Huh? You can see all the reaction. So you as an educator, uh, you can just go. Huh? You can just go to here, for example, right? And you can notice that, uh, okay, this person has liked this comment. This person has liked this comment. So this is something that is very useful for brainstorming. Or you just ask a quick question to your class. How do you feel today? And all your students response. And from there, you can tell, okay, nampaknya kebanyakan, uh, most of our, most of you say, this is how you feel. And when you take your mouse and go over, you can see who is the one that responded to this. Oh, this is Yin Ching, um, Shaiful and eh? Zahir. So you like this uh, comment, right? So this is how you feel this morning, right? Uh, so you can use this feature. This feature is not available in other applications is only available in teams right so you can use this feature as a very quick class discussion you can use this feature as uh, uh, something to um, do a brainstorming session so everyone give their answer and you tell them okay which answer you like the best give a reaction to that and then you can tell okay so now you can select okay so those of you who have liked this comment Okay, uh, Yin Chen, Chai Fu, and Zahid. Okay, maybe you would like to share with the class. Uh, why did you like this particular comment? And maybe, jangan lupa lah yang, uh, don't forget the one that originally posted, right? So, the one that posted is Che Farana, right? So, you can ask Che Farana, uh, why did you put this? Huh? Everyone of your friends seems to like your comment. Can you share with us a little bit? Ah, so, this is how we encourage uh, a form of student engagement. Huh? So, we have to understand our learners are the introvert and extrovert. Huh? So, not anyone likes to uh, talk. Huh? So, this is something that you can use. Okay. Uh, yes. So, those who are having guest account, yes, this is some of the features. If you're having guest account, yeah, there are some features you cannot use. For example, emoji, huh? you, you are not able to access that, right? Okay. Now, somebody is asking, um, how do you turn off notification? Now, you notice that when people are commenting, uh, people are giving messages, you have that annoying blue box appearing in your screen, pump, 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 you know. Um, so, uh, um, it's coming out like a, a ching sound, right? Ching, 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 ching sound. So, so, if so many people are responding, all the blue box is appearing at the same time, right? So, how you can do that? You can turn off this notification, okay? So, you just go to your account here. Uh, you have University Malaya here, your account. Okay, so you click this one, right? Click this one, and then you click Manage Account. Okay, I, I go back, yeah? Click this one here, where your picture is. Click Manage Account, right? And then you have Notification, here, yeah, Notification, okay? And then this one, Play Sound for Incoming Calls, so you can disable this, 
right? And then here, these are notification style, right? So how? So message preview, right? So message preview is basically you will get all that, right? So you can turn off this, right? So you won't get that annoying uh, boxes you have that, right? So you can play with the settings uh, uh, to help you play sound for incoming call notification. You don't want that ching 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 sound. You can also disable this here, all right? So I hope that answered the question. Um, also, maybe it'll be useful to many of you here. Okay, Gita, Kenna. All right, so we look at other features in Teams. So you have the chat function. Now you have emoji. All right, now you also have GIF, GIF, right? So GIF is what? GIFs are pictures with moving motions, right? Pictures that moves, uh, it's not a still picture. Ah, so I will uh, tell, so maybe you make a joke uh, and then you're, you just imagine uh, you make a joke and uh, people want to laugh, right? They cannot laugh, right? Uh, to uh, to your joke, right? Takkan they want to unmute, laugh and then to balik the microphone, uh, off the microphone back again. So you can even select GIF like this, for example. Ah, so when your student is presenting, for example, uh, and uh, make a joke, maybe your others make a joke, uh, you can put this one. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, GIF. So you can use GIFs in your classroom, right? So you can even tell students, find for me a GIF uh, that is very much relatable uh, uh, to you. So if you have some activity or discussion, so you can use GIF. Uh, and this is not just limited to these GIFs. You can even search. Uh, you can even search for other GIFs, uh, um, just search here and it will come out. Uh. So for example, how you feeling uh, this morning? Uh, so you do a little bit of ice breaking for your class. Uh, okay, or well, those who are admin, you can also uh, use this in many different ways. Uh. So how you feel this morning sleepy, for example? Uh, so uh, inilah perasaan uh, my, my, my um, uh, experience this morning feeling sleepy. So you can see this is the motion, right? So you can use GIF, you can also use sticker, right? Okay, you can also use sticker here, all right? Um, and uh, this sticker you can can uh, uh, use and label. Uh, you can also use this, but usually stickers we don't use it as much often as compared to um, GIF and um, uh, emojis. All right. Now, if you are in a group, if you have selected a group, you also have the ability to share files. Uh, but um, in this case, um, I'm not the host, right? So I, I cannot send the the file attachment so you will also have a file attachment here so this is something that is very useful huh? you you can uh, share <coughs> files very fast let's say uh, you want to refer to a particular document you can just very fast click on that document here uh, there will be a, a, a click here uh, attachment so you can share the file uh, it's linked to your onedrive you, you can also share the file from your desktop right Okay, so you can even click this uh, three dots here and you can even link uh, to other application, right? So these are um, on the show conversation. Now on the top here, you also have the other reaction buttons. Uh, you can use this. Uh, you can also encourage uh, your colleagues and your um, students to use this reaction button. So for example, finish a presentation. Uh, this is sometimes uh, one of the most frequent complaints uh, or feedback from lecturers. Kita dah habis presentation, but we want to clap. We want to give acknowledgement, right? Tapi how? Takkan the whole class unmute the microphone and clap, and then lepas tu mute it back again. So you can use this one, right? This reaction at the top. So this one, for example, ah, so you have uh, a clapping icon. Uh, this is virtual clapping, okay? Or you can even put all this icon, right? So you can try that. Uh, these are the various reaction that you have available uh, um, here. And other applications also have this, uh, but um, um, this is um, the features of Microsoft Teams in complementary with other features that we see, emoji, GIFs, and all this. Now, if you see here, this is the camera for you to turn and on and off. This is the microphone. And this is your sharing button. This is your sharing button, right? So um, I'm going to stop sharing now. I'm going to show you a screenshot. How does this look like? OK, let me just uh, screenshot this. And I'm going to show how does it look like here for all of you. Okay, so those of us who are not used to sharing screen uh, in uh, Microsoft Teams, this is how you're going to share the screen. Okay, let me just put this here. Let me just share the screen now. Okay, so here you are seeing my Microsoft Word document now, right? Okay, so now, um, 
here, when you click this, this arrow here, right, um, you are going to get a box like this. You're going to get a box like this. So you can select the screen that you want to share, right? One of the things that usually uh, our um, users of Microsoft Teams will do is they want to focus only on certain application or certain window. Now, bear in mind that let's say if you choose window, uh, let's say if you have a Microsoft Word or a document open and you click window, you can only focus on the Word document. But let's say if you were to switch on other things, uh, you want to go to other areas, your users cannot see. Eh, sorry, users. Your participants cannot see. So if they cannot see, they'll say, oh, I cannot see. Uh, what are you doing? I cannot see. You know what are you doing? So I will always encourage to use the screen option. Uh, don't use the Windows option unless you are a uh, very highly uh, you know what you're doing lah, huh? and you know where to switch and you know if you were to switch applications in between windows in between you have to change here again okay? if you know that then it's fine right otherwise just maintain screen now you see got two screen here because i'm having uh two screen right but uh, if you only have one screen you only will have one option here so you can click the screen now at the top at, at the bottom here you can use something called presenter view presenter view right so here there is another way to present right if you click screen you can show your powerpoint you can show your document and all this now there is another way um, if you have powerpoint there's another way called presenter view right presenter view um, so if you upload your powerpoint here you can if you have your powerpoint in one drive you can browse and select the file or you can browse it from your computer browse the file in your computer and it's very nice you know this feature is very nice in a way oh i got giraffe picture here <laughs> okay so there's uh this feature is very nice i'm going to show you what happens if i use presenter view right so uh let me upload the file i, I did it this morning yeah for those who joined the workshop early um you notice that there is a presenter view right so this is how presenter view uh looks like Okay, so bear in mind, it needs time to upload your document, yeah? Okay, so when you click the PowerPoint to upload, it takes time, a little bit time to load, right? So once it loads, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so now presenter view is going to be on. Okay, um, so now you will be able to see a slide, right? Um, this is how the presenter view looks like, right? So you can see, right you have the presenter view right now let me um, just screenshot this okay just screenshot this and i'm going to share to you how does it look like huh? from the uh meeting host point of view okay this is how it looks like i'm going to share with you so this is really cool you know this is really cool i i i i, I always use this um application huh? i always use this presenter view Okay, so now if I go back to my Microsoft Word, uh, this is how it looks like, right? So you have your PowerPoint. This is using Presenter View. Huh? So earlier, uh, you, you, you have that option, right, to either share a screen or upload a file. So once you upload your file, this is how it looks like. So you have the number of slides. You can just easily scroll through here. And you have a cursor. You have a, a laser pointer. You have all the necessary uh ink and highlight and anything you want to do here you can use this right you can see your slide this is big enough right it's big enough so you can see your slide as well as um annotate anything you want uh on the slide you want to point anything on your slide you can also do that right so this is what we call uh presenter view uh, in microsoft uh teams okay so i'm gonna stop here now uh do you all have any questions uh on sharing your slides on uh, so we learned about how to share your slides we learned about some of the basic features of microsoft teams we learned about uh, disabling notifications in teams right we we learned about all these emoji gifs and all this so do you have any uh, any questions on on this part okay so we need to upload the file in teams or just can share mm. we need to upload the file in teams or just can share the view screen from google drive or from uh, Anida, you can upload the file if you want to use presenter view. Like I showed you earlier, there is the slide and you want to have all the necessary presentation uh, tools there. You can use presenter view um, or you just want to share your screen. 
that is okay. You don't need to upload your uh, document. If you want to share your screen, you don't need to upload your document anyway. Okay. Okay, uh, here there's a question. Yes. Uh, okay, just a moment. Huh? Can we live stream a Microsoft Teams meeting on Facebook? Yes, you can, uh, but this requires uh, some uh, advanced technical thing. Huh? So maybe if you all are interested in this, you can drop me an email. I can share with you the necessary uh, settings and links for this. Yeah. Um, under the three dots, there is a dial pad. What is the use of the dial pad? Okay, just a moment. Gita coming to that. Huh? Uh, do you mind sharing the recording with us later? Can Rana, no problem. Okay, let us proceed. I'm going to share, continue sharing now. All right, so let me go to Teams. Okay, so now um, we are going to these three dots. Yeah, we're going to these three dots here. So if you click these three dots, Right, you have um, other options here. You have other options here. So you have device settings, right? You have uh, call help is basically to monitor um, what is your Wi-Fi strength and all this. Uh, this is not really important. Uh. Then you have meeting information here, right? So here you can have a link if you want to invite uh, people to come and join. Uh, but just be careful. Uh, this is not 100% uh, proof. Uh. Uh, that they can join. Uh, they, if uh, it depends on the format of meeting that you're created, is it within the teams, the group, or through the calendar? Right. You have to bear in mind about this. Okay. Now, if I click the three dots again, uh, you have uh, device settings. For example, here. For example, you can. Uh, some people say, "I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you." You're right. So maybe your microphone. You have to see uh, whether you are using the right microphone. So to change this, you can just click the drop down. And then you can change if you are using different different microphones and all this. Huh? So if your microphone is working, you will see the bar is moving here, right? Um, here you can check about your speakers and all this. So these are all in terms of camera. You have the camera settings here. Um, so now another cool feature in Microsoft Teams is something that uh, we call together mode. OK, so before I go to together, together mode, I'm going to look at apply background effects, right? So if you click apply background effects, uh, what is this? This is to change your virtual background uh, to change your virtual background. So if you want to change your virtual background, this is how we do it. So you have few um, collections here. Blur means you want to maintain your original background. Uh, it's just that it's going to be blurred. People cannot see what's at the back. Lah. Tapi it's your uh, house or office background, whatever background you have, right? Where, uh, where else you can even change? Uh, if you don't want, you can even change to something a bit more professional. So you have all the setting that is already ready, right? It's all ready here. So you can click, right? So um, like this too is, is, not, <laughs> is, is not in Microsoft Teams. Huh? This is something that um, I, I choose myself, right? All right, so you can choose this. Now you can even choose, uh, for example, like this uh, background. You can choose. Uh, uh, these are something that I uploaded. Uh, I uploaded um, online. So how to upload online? If you want to customize your own background, for example, you want to have the chancellery. Uh, 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 they want to go chancellor, uh, the chancellery hall behind you. You want to customize and put UM logo. You can do that. Once you have already designed, you click Add New. Add New, and then you select. Uh, what is the file that you want to share huh? and then it will be uploaded inside here something like this all right so this is on uh, virtual background right and then now we are coming to there's a question on dial pad right uh, this dial pad right if this one if because teams you have the uh, call feature Right, you have a call feature, right? So this is the dial pad. You you can call same like WhatsApp. You can call somebody. Uh, you want to key in the number, you can call them. All right. Uh, okay. There's some questions in the chat. What is what is it that the presenter view sometimes suddenly get off? Then we need to click the presenter again. Yes, um, Aisha. That happens is because when you start to click other areas, the presenter view goes off, right? Uh, so if you want to be consistent on the presenter view, then you just maintain that. But if you start clicking or switching windows and all this, uh, the presenter view might go off. Uh, so you have to just uh, redo the whole process again. And uh, that that is uh, the process lah. Huh? That what happens, okay? And sometimes slide macam bergerak sini. <laughs> so, okay, slide bergerak sendiri. You know why? Uh, <laughs> let me show you the uh, the the problem that you have. Ah, uh, slide bergerak sendiri. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to teams here. All right. 
Okay, so here, if you all notice, um, you have two buttons here. Uh, one is the I, uh, Mata, I account, and stop presenting. Stop presenting is basically you want to stop presenting, presenter view. This is something that you want to disable, all right? Why, why is this? Uh, if you don't click this, when you see the slide is moving on your own, is because your participants are moving it, right? Your audience is clicking the slide and it's moving, right? So if you don't want the slide to move without your instruction, you have to disable this because this I says that uh, people can navigate on their own. They can see the slides on their own, right? So that is where it disturbs your presentation. So you want to uh, disable this so that they cannot progress the slides on their own, right? They have to follow your pace. All right. Uh, if the internet is not so good, are the recording still run by Teams and the meeting is going to be run automatically? I'm the organizer and my internet. Yes, the in, the recording will still go on. Yeah, um, I have personally experienced this. The recording is still going on as long as the meeting is on. Um, even though you are the host and you got cut off, the recording is still going on uh, in the meeting. So it's not a problem. Uh, uh, yes, I can so, attest to that too. Ah, yeah, Miss uh, also. Yeah. If uh, Please go ahead. If you are if you are in two meetings, I mean, uh, you have to leave one and you have to attend the other one. Uh, you the one that you left will, will still be uh, recording. Mm. It won't stop. Okay, so it, it will continue. Huh? Uh, so <laughs> uh, those of you are uh, who are uh, KJ, uh, ketua jabatan or boss, ah, uh, so accidentally disconnected. You want to hear people apa yang orang cakap pasal saya eh, dalam meeting? Ah, kenal lah tu. <laughs> because the meeting will be recorded. Uh, and it will be in stream. Uh, so be be careful. Uh, be careful. Okay. Uh, Okay, like Google Meet, for example, it will still run and record. Yes, 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 it, it will still run. Huh? It's not a problem. Cannot see your presentation. Is it because of my internet line? Uh, yes. Uh, sometimes, Aisha, if your internet line is a bit um, slow, uh, it might affect a little bit on the presentation loading time. Okay, so you will you have to consider that. Huh? Just need to know presentation can be in any form such as words, PDF. Yes, any form, PowerPoint, PDF, Word. You can even share your computer screen. Uh, you want to show people where to click the buttons in your computer screen. You want to share your desktop. You can also do that. Uh, uh, screen sharing is to basically uh, share any form of documents or visual you want to show uh, to your audience. All right. OK, nice. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, now, uh, just a few things before before we uh, end the chapter on teams. Uh, I'm conscious of the time. Um, there is one thing that you might want to take a look here as an uh, educator and as an uh, administrator, right? Now, uh, remember I told you earlier that uh, I did a training with one institution and they have unsubscribed their learning management system yeah, and they want to use Teams, right? Uh, and one of the reasons is why, because everything can be done within the Teams platform, right? So, for example, if you click Files, Files here, yeah, right? Here you can store files. You can store files as uh, here. You can either upload the files you want, right? In Word, PDF, PowerPoint, you can upload the files, right? And also on top of that, you can even create a folder. You can even create a folder and 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 as many folders you want to create here, you can create a folder and you can put the documents in the folder or you can separately upload the documents and it will appear here. So for example, I'm going to upload a file here. So I'm going to upload a file, uh, maybe, okay, this file, right? So um, it's going to load into this. Can you see? It's already loaded here. Now, this is my group, right? My cool team, right? So if you upload a file here, it's going to be here. Uh, so anyone within the team, what happens if I click this? What happens if I click this document? It's going to launch within Microsoft Teams. And the document is going to launch within Microsoft Teams. And any members that is in the team, uh, in your group that you have created, all can edit this document at the same time. Right? So this is something that I use very much in my class. Huh? So uh, example, I give an activity. Describe what you can see. Once you have added all your members or your students into this Teams, uh, and I open this file, they all can edit at the same time. They all can edit and type at the same time, 
right? Uh, so everyone can do a live activity at the same time. So this is something that is very useful. Uh, if you are into teaching or you want to look into, uh, you're doing some brainstorming session with your department or something, this is something that is very useful, right? You can do this for Word, you can do this for PowerPoint. So you can uh, create a, a file here, you can upload it, okay? Or you want to, let's say if you are using the file very often, uh, you're using the file very often, you can create it as a tab. So I'm just going to click the plus sign here, and then it's going to open all the applications. So I'm going to select Word, depends on what the file format, yeah? Word, okay, and you can see that the file is here. So it's either you can upload or you can link it here, right? And what is going to happen here, if you see, is going to open as a tab. So you've got two options. You want to op uh, put it as a file, or you want to open it as a word. So if you click word here, uh, what is going to happen is going to auto load. It's going to auto load and it's going to straight away launch for you and you can straight away start doing your work on this, right? So if it's a document that you're using very often, I will suggest that create it as a tag. Huh? And then if later on you're already done and you want to remove this, you can also remove. Just click this one and then remove it. Huh? And the document will still be here. Uh, so it's very nice. You can share as many documents as you want and you can also upload as uh, many documents you want. And this feature is also very useful. You can link it to um, SharePoint. Uh, SharePoint. But uh, SharePoint is another workshop by itself. Huh? Uh, we don't we can not enough time to cover in the three hours. Yeah. Um, so you can even explore on this uh, SharePoint. And SharePoint is also a very useful uh, database to store all these materials and you can even see <coughs> Who is editing the documents and is also like a storage system uh, um, uh, uh, it's like a, a website by itself uh, where you can store all that right so you can even explore on this uh, and uh, look through this uh, this is what is available in team so everything is in the, under one platform so like what i told you one platform to rule them all everything is there you can upload the documents everything is there okay and uh Oh yeah, don't forget to share about the meeting room, yeah? Okay, so just need to know, okay, PDF, okay, don't forget to share about the meeting room. Okay, so if you click this one, uh, more actions, right? And you go to, let me see, meeting information, meeting option, okay? If you have meeting, let me see meeting options here. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back again. So you click the straight dots go to meeting information here and then you see meeting options click meeting options and it's going to go to another uh, window so you can put the settings that you want in this window okay so it's loading now oh no <laughs> i'm not the organizer uh, so i i cannot uh, do any changes but this is the way right this is the way and you have uh, many many uh, options uh, and uh, one of it is to enable waiting room. Another one of it is you can also disable waiting room. So anyone can just join the meeting, right? So you can try that um, option. Uh, you can try that option, Alida, uh, and look into that, okay? Uh, can change background presenter be changed to UM logo, background presenter. Uh, yes, uh, Nadia, you can design. You can design your own present, uh, present uh, virtual virtual background and put uh, they want to go transfer any landmark in UM and you can put the logo uh, and you can add it as a virtual background in Teams, all right? Can the presenter still see the chat box if they are presenting? Yes, excellent. That is a nice question. So you can, that's a beauty of it. You can present and also you can open the chat box at the same time, right? That is, uh, so if you share your screen, you're going to focus on your uh, PowerPoint. Whereas if you put a presenter view, um, you can see the chat box. Can the file be downloaded by team members from the teams? Yes, they can download that file. In the meeting option just now, to set up the waiting room, Anita, the waiting room is as, uh, in teams is by default. Huh? It's default setting, it will automatically go into the waiting room and you have to approve them. Unless you have changed the setting to them gaining automatic entry. If you have not changed any setting, by default, the, they will automatically go into waiting room and you have to click the participant list here, right? Their names are going to appear in waiting room and it's either a tick or an X. So you just click tick to allow them. 
or if you don't want to allow them, you can click X. Okay. All right. Okay. Noted. Okay. So now we come to the last uh, feature of Microsoft Teams. If you click this three dots, you have something called together mode, right? Together mode. Uh, but to use together mode, um, you will need to activate your cameras. Okay, <laughs> so I I'm not sure, uh, Miss Umu, you want to take uh, you want to take a photo? How? Uh, you want to take a photo now or or how? Uh, um, up to you. Okay, so maybe you, we want to take a photo now. Maybe you can activate your camera. You can on your camera, and we can take a photo now. And I also can show you about the together mode. Uh, you can show I can show you about together mode. So this will require you to on your cameras. Okay, so you on your cameras. Okay. Can, and we can, uh, take can you hold on for a while? They yeah. don't have access to it. Let me let me enable their camera first. Can no problem. Okay, Bawani said, how about participant? We can only view maximum nine at a time and all turn on the video. Is there a way to view more? Yes, you can view more. Okay. Um, I will once the video camera is activated, I will show you. Huh, Bawani, you can actually view more. Huh, than just the nine. Grids, huh? So like Google Meet um, and like um, Zoom and Cisco WebEx, right? You go to the next page, right? Next page. Um, here you have many. You have many grids. Huh? I will. I will show you. All right. Uh, everyone should be able to assess their camera now. Uh, can you try? Yeah, you can All on right. your camera. We're seeing if you. Yeah, uh, I enabled the camera already. Okay, Afika. You don't have to create a chat room. Huh? The chat room feature is already in Microsoft Teams, right? So if you have the, the chat feature here, huh? you already have a chat feature here. This is the chat feature. You don't have to create it. Yeah? And if you create a Teams here, um, here if you create a Teams here, my, my, my cool team, right? I created here. This is, the, uh, this is the chat feature. This is a chat feature. So it's already integrated in Teams, okay? Oh, uh, Dr. Ahmed is also here. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice to see all of you here. Uh, okay. Don't have a camera right now. Okay. So to answer Bhavani's question, um, you will notice that I have how many grids here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. I have nine grids, but we have about 160 over people online now. Right. So I can view more people. I can view more people. And how I am going to do that? Uh, you can click the three dots here and click large gallery. You see, this is gallery, right? Gallery, we are in gallery mode now. Gallery, you can view maximum nine, right? But if you click large gallery preview, um, I'm gonna do that now. So what happens if you click large gallery preview? Okay, it is going to load and you can see that you can see more people. So as more people on the cameras, uh, more people you can see, right? So this is large gallery view, okay? So it's beyond nine huh? you can go beyond nine right so you just click this one and click large gallery view all right uh amisa has said i've attended a talk before they don't have chat feature how to avoid that amisa that is because they have disabled the chat feature we can do that also huh? um you go to the settings as what i showed you earlier you go to here go to meeting info um meeting options you also have an option to disable chat. So in that case, the meeting that you have attended, they have disabled the chat feature. Uh -huh. So it doesn't mean that the chat feature is not available. It's available by default, but you as the organizer, you can disable it. All right. So in this case, that uh, uh, organization or that organizers have disabled the chat feature. That's why you're not able to see. It. All right. OK, so I think all of us are ready. Uh, even though there are many who has on their camera, but we, we, we can't fit everything inside here. Uh, so this is like the lucky pe people who are here. <laughs> All right. Uh, OK, before I take a picture, uh, I want to show you some other cool uh, features as well. Um, you can click the three dots. You can also have together mode, right? So if I click together mode, what happens? Um, you can see that we are actually sitting like in uh, or auditorium style. Right? We are sitting in an auditorium style, right? Um, so this is a together mode. Uh, this is a very nice feature uh, I use in my classroom. So even though we are teaching virtually, 
um, I always use together mood now so that it looks like it's actually in a classroom setup. Uh, so uh, you want to share screen, tak boleh together mood now lah. But if you just want to talk about something, you want to explain about something interrelated, you can always activate together mood now. So this is an example of together mood now. All of us are sitting in a nice auditorium. Uh, you can also change the scenery here. So if you see there's a small pencil sign here, if I click this one, I can even change the scenery. But you want to notice that um, each scene has um, support. Yeah? For example, this scene has up to 50 videos only. And that means up to 50 people only can sit here. So even though you got 180 over people this morning, uh, but um, 100 people, 180 people have turned on the camera, uh, unfortunately only the lucky 50 uh, can be here. But you can change, uh, you can change the setting. Uh, uh, so maximum is 50 lah, 50. So each of the settings here, you have different different setting and you have the capacity here. How many people can fit? 14. How many people can fit this? 12, 12. So 50 here and then 47 here. Okay, now you want to change the setting and I click apply. It's going to change to this setting now. So you can take a nice photo of this, right? And then maybe now if you want to change, I can even change to uh, this setting now. Ah, see, all of you have your notebook, but you all are not using the notebook. Ah, see, so you can even change this setting. Ah, so it's up to you, lah. It's up to you. Um, I think that we can we can use this feature and we can take a nice photo. Okay. So are you all ready to take a photo? Maybe we give uh, the best smile to show that the training is going on well so far. <laughs> okay. All right. So maybe we we give uh Umu. You want you can help uh Umu to to take a yeah. photo. Okay, so um, we are okay. All right, uh, all right, can everyone smile? <laughs> all right, uh, hold on. All right, one, two, three. Okay, so maybe with, right. uh, let me change the scenery again. Uh, maybe sure. uh, let me change another scenery and maybe uh, this is a brighter one. This is quite important, the brighter one, because we can see the thumbs up. Okay, <laughs> the snow one was a bit uh, dark, huh? so we cannot see the thumbs up. Huh? So now we maybe put a thumbs up and it's a bit brighter, then we, we, we can take a nice photo. Uh, Umu can help again. Uh, Umu. Right, okay. Smile, one, two, three. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So I think uh, we have come to the uh, closure of the team session. Um, okay. Let me see. For the together mood, there's some questions here. For the together mood, how to insert name? Oh no, Ko. Um, for the together mood, we 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 cannot insert uh, names. Uh, the the default option doesn't have names. So if you want to take a photo that has names. I would suggest that you use the large gallery mode. For example, this mode, right? You see this mode here? You have the names of your participants here. So if you want the names of the participants uh, with the photo, use large gallery mode or gallery mode. There, the name is coming out. Huh? Together mode, uh, we cannot put the names there. Huh? It's not available. Uh, okay, and Bhavani says sometimes the large gallery view seems not accessible. Why? Okay. So if I'm going to click this more action, uh, more more actions here. If you see the large gallery, you will see the description that view more than nine videos at once. So if it's less than nine videos, videos means that people have on their camera, right? So if there are nine uh, and below, uh, they are lesser than nine people have on their camera. This option won't be available, right? If there's more than nine people have on their camera, this option will be available. So that is why sometimes it's not available there. Okay. Uh, mine. Uh, uh, yes, Ratna, you are, you are having a guest account. Uh, you can see beside your name is written guest. So as a guest, you have limited functionality. So that is why you don't have the uh, large gallery. Anita is asking. <laughs> Anita is asking which button to snap picture that Umu was did just now. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, in here, 
kita tak ada butang ah we, we we don't have uh, uh, teams don't have a uh, uh, button that will be a really cool feature isn't it uh, to to take a picture uh, you can use snipping tool lah you can use snipping tool or another one as what uh, friends have shared print screen tapi print screen when you use is a bit blur ah the picture is a bit blur so if you go to your search here if you see my mouse search here right at the bottom left you type snipping tool s n i p uh, Uh, PING, you just type SNIP, it's going to come out here, snipping tool. So you just click this, uh, it's going to come out like a box like this, right? And you just uh, drag like this from the top to the bottom, and then you save your picture. Okay, this is more clear. Lah. Huh? You can use snipping tool. Huh? Or another one in your keyboard, you have print screen. Ada butang print screen. So you click that print screen, and then you can... Uh, paste it into a PowerPoint or paste it into Word and you can save it. Huh? Uh, but that one is usually very blur. Lah, huh? I don't use uh, Princeton. Okay, now I knew about snipping tool function. Huh? Okay, <laughs> so maybe you can give feedback to Microsoft. Have a screen, have a photo taking function. Huh? That will really make it different compared to other platforms. Okay, uh, all right. So I think I've uh, come to the end of the uh, Teams, uh, uh, Teams module. Uh, team section. Just bear in mind one final thing. Ah, uh, uh, I don't encourage you to do this now because our uh, session is not over. Um, just bear in mind you have leaf here, All right? Leaf button, right? So if you are the participant, you have leaf button, right? But if you are the meeting organizer, you will have not just leaf button. You will have another drop down. They have a small triangle here. Kalau you click that. You have another option called in meeting. In meeting. If you are the meeting organizer, yeah, in meeting. So please always remember if you are the meeting organizer, click in meeting. In meeting means the meeting is over and everyone goes and do their own. But if you click leave, you are the only one who leave. Everyone is still online. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Right. So as the uh, teacher, educator, especially in the classroom. You, you. If you don't want your student to continually to be online after you left the class, click in meeting. You click leave. You are the only one who left. Ah, uh, the meeting is still going on with other students. Now you see only leave button is because uh, uh, my this is my account and I am a participant. I'm not the meeting organizer. But if you're the organizer, you will have two option. Other small triangle here, macam drop down. You click the drop down. You have in meeting. Okay. All right, so I think we have come to the end of the Teams model. So as I estimated the time, uh, it will take about one and a half hours plus, right? So we have already ended about Teams. Okay, so I think we will have a short break and uh, we will come back after this and look into Microsoft OneNote. Microsoft OneNote is very simple. Okay, very simple. Senang saja. I think setengah jam dah boleh siap dah. Very fast. Uh, in half an hour, we can finish uh, Microsoft OneNote. Uh, and then we're going to look into Microsoft Suite. Okay, we only have another less than one hour together. You see, I'm already started to become sad, but never mind. Let's take a break first. Okay, so we will come back at um, 11. I think we only can afford five minutes break. Uh, uh, let's make it 11.50 lah. Huh? Let's make it 11.50. So we'll come back at 11.50. Yeah? Okay, thank you everyone. See you later. Huh? 11.50. You don't have to leave the meeting. Huh? You can just leave your computer like this. We'll come back at 11.50. Okay, everyone. Um, so we will resume the... Uh, workshop yeah we're gonna resume the workshop for this morning so hope everyone is back um so the rest of the workshop um for this part we will look into uh microsoft OneNote. yeah microsoft one note okay and there's a nice cliche to microsoft one note um we will call it is a digital notebook huh? it's a digital notebook huh? for microsoft one note all right so i see Mm, okay, so as Lina says, we have a class of 25 and the pictures are not in alphabetical order. Is there a fast way to detect anyone who switch off his camera, especially during a test or quiz? Pictures are not in alphabetical order. Is there a way, fast way to detect anyone who switch off his camera? Uh, for class of 25, is actually, um, you can use a large gallery view where all your students are going to be there with their camera on. Um, there is no particular fast way to detect, but uh, 
you can try the participants list, uh, you know, the show participants list, uh, Aslina, and from there, you can see uh, there is a microphone button and there's a camera button. Uh, you can't see it now here. It's because we are not the meeting organizer. But as the meeting organizer, you will see a microphone uh, button. Okay, let me... Uh, yeah, yeah. If you see the participants list, you'll see a microphone button and a camera button, right? So you can go to the participants list and detect from there whose camera is actually off. That So that will be one of the fastest way uh, to detect uh, because you want to see manually which name is missing, right? Um, so that will be the most ideal way. Go to the participants list and see if their camera is off. That means that is the person that is not owning the camera. Okay, I hope that helps, uh, Asina. All right. Um, okay, so this morning we are going to look at uh, Microsoft OneNote. Okay, so um, here uh, we can see that you, uh, it's not just necessarily students. Um, he, as an educator, uh, you can use Microsoft OneNote. Students can use Microsoft OneNote. Uh, administrators can also use Microsoft OneNote. Huh? And what is Microsoft OneNote? We want to compile information. We want to store information. You want to um, share notes and all this. Um, so it's like a, our own digital notebook, right? You can organize your notes. Uh, you can create pages. You can share pages. Okay, you can share uh, content. Yeah? Uh, so uh, you can um, also utilize digital ink. I will show you later what is this digital ink. Uh, basically, the digital ink is something that you can write on your own. Huh? You can write on your own. Okay. So these are the features of Microsoft OneNote. But before we go further, we need to bear in mind there are four sections to uh, Microsoft OneNote, right? So if you are an educator, um, you will need all four sections. Uh, this workshop this morning, we have a blend of um, administrators and lecturers, right? So for the uh, administrators, you can only you you only need to focus on this three: uh, collaboration space, content library, and teacher only section, right? Unless uh, I, I mean, these are, are my suggested sections uh, for you to focus as an administrator. Uh, are those who are doing administrative job or uh, administrator, uh, you only need this three. And uh, walaupun dipanggil teacher only section, but uh, it's your own personal notebook, right? What is the difference? This collaboration space is you as the um, OneNote owner, so you create a Teams, right? And Teams is part, uh, Microsoft OneNote is part of the Teams. I will show you later, right? So as you create, you are the owner. Uh, so you can edit the content and the members in your team or the students can edit the content. So if you want this, this is called collaboration space, right? So one way just now I show you through Teams is you can upload a document and everyone can go inside and edit, right? That is through Teams uh, using Microsoft Word file but you can do the similar style um, in Microsoft OneNote. I will show you later, yeah? But this section is called collaboration space. You can edit, students can edit. Content library is um, only the teacher can edit the content, the students or the members of the group can only view. So this, if you have any uh, minutes of the meeting, for example, or you have any uh, PowerPoint or any, um, any uh, notes that you want to share uh, where only you can edit and others cannot edit. They can only view it. This will be the section, right? This is will be the section. And this one is your own personal notebook. Yeah, your own personal notebook. So whatever did you write in here, um, only you can edit and you can see your students cannot see your students cannot uh, edit. Huh? This is your own private notebook, right? Okay, now as an educator in every team setting, everyone will have their own notebooks So whatever group members you have added into your teams, each of them will have their own notebook. So in this case, you can edit, the students can edit their own notebook, right? I will show you later, yeah? But just bear in mind, these are the four options, okay? So let's dive straight into uh, Microsoft OneNote. Huh? I will show you Microsoft OneNote now. All right, so now we are into the teams. All right, we are into teams now. Okay, so now just to um, share with you, uh, just imagine that, okay, never mind. I don't want to go into here first. Later, I will show you. Okay, so in this case, now this is the teams, right? You have created my cool team, the group you have created. Now, if you see at the top here, you have class notebook, class notebook. So you can click this one, 
class notebook, right? And then here you can set up a class one note class notebook. Now another way to do it is you can click the general channel here, right? Click the general channel. You can also set up from here. Uh, two ways, huh? You want to set up from here only one time. You set up from here. Tanku um, said teacher only section. Do all teacher get their own private space or teachers will be sharing the same? Uh, private space. Uh, that's a very good question. So if there's the owner, if there, if you have multiple owners in a group, they all can view this at the same time, right? Uh, so that is not your own private notebook. So you have to be careful about the ownership also as well eh? um, in the team. You have owner and you have members. You have to be careful on that front also, okay? Um, so now you can set up the class notebook here or you can set up through the tab here, right? Either way, it's fine. So if you click class notebook here, only one time, you only have to set up only one time, right? And then you click set up one note class notebook. Click this and it's going to give you some option. Uh, if you are using OneNote for the first time, you can click blank notebook. If you have used OneNote before and you have created a template uh, for other courses huh, uh, and you want to recycle that template uh, for this, you can use that. Huh? So you can choose from existing notebook. Huh? So if you're using it for the first time, you can click blank, right? So I'm going to click blank. Um, here, Microsoft OneNote gives you um, some reminders about the sections that you have in your OneNote as what I showed you in the slides earlier. It's the same contents. You can click next. All right. Uh, here, uh, if you're an educator, um, this will be your student's personal notebook, right? So every student will get their own notebook. So this will be default their name. Uh, the, um, so that means in the teams, your group, you have all the members, right? All your members will have this uh, one note. So it depends. As an administrator, you might not want to use this feature. But as a teacher, uh, lecturer, you might want to use this feature, right? So this one, you, you don't have to type anything. One note will create the name um, automatically from your member list. This is the section that belongs to um, your um, section in the OneNote notebook. This one you can rename, right? So if you don't want handout, uh, you want to uh, put it as uh, class notes or uh, you can put it as or class materials, uh, anything uh, you can create as many as you want. Uh, and then maybe homework is sounds more like a high school. Maybe you want to put assignments. OK, and then uh, you want quizzes and you can add as many sections as you want. Right. If you don't want three, you can even remove and you only want one also can. Right. It is depends on you. Huh? This is your student notebook, your members of the group, their own notebook. Huh? So uh, I'm going to click create now. So click create. OK, so it's going to um, get your class notebook ready. Uh, this takes time, huh? uh, just a little bit of time. Uh, so once it's ready, um, you are good to go. OK, so now is the time we just have to <laughs> just wait for the thing to load. Yeah? OK, now you can see it's, it's loading and uh, you will get a nice welcome page. Then you get welcome to class notebook. Yeah? Section ni boleh tambah kemudian tak? Yeah, you can tambah. Yes, Aslan, you can uh, tambah uh, later. Yeah? Uh, but for the student notebook, I recommend you to add in before you set up. Uh, don't don't add on later on. But as the digital notebook, you can always add on more sections as you want. But for the students notebook, where they're going to create each notebook for the students, I would suggest you do it immediately. Uh, don't thumb up. But your personal notebook later on, you can thumb up. I will show you uh, how. OK, so you're going to get a nice uh, message like this. Welcome to class notebook. Um, so some of uh, the educators, when they use uh, one note, uh, they 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 thought they they thought that is only one page this one page and uh, I have seen some educators where they just work on one page and they thought that's it you know there's nothing else uh, on this so actually there's more yeah you have to click this uh, show you have to click this show navigation show navigation right so when you click show navigation you have um, the three and uh, four sections you have collaboration space content library, teacher only, and you have uh, a student. So this student actually, uh, Tan, Tan Miao Ying actually joined using my team code. Lah. So I think earlier when I showed the team code, 
so she has uh, used the team code and joined the team, right? So that's why I have one student here. <laughs> so actually, this is the first training when uh, I shared the team code. This is the first training I see that uh, someone has actually used the team code to, to join. <laughs> okay, so never mind. So we have a student here. Good. Uh, this has happened also. So you are, for example, if you have all your members of the group uh, in the teams, uh, you will get the list of all the students here. OK, so I give you for example. Uh, um, OK, for example, this one. Uh, this is an example of a, a one note, right? OK, so I'm going to go to class notebook. So this one, all members have already joined. Uh, they are in my group, uh, Creative Online Teaching. They are already in the group. They are already a member, right? So what happens here is now if I click the navigation pane here, you will notice that this is the list of all the students. So these are all people in my team now. They have already joined using the team code or I've added them as a guest. So they've already joined. Uh, so once they have already joined the group, you will get a notebook, personal notebook for each and every one. So this is an example how it looks like. All right. Um, so I'm going to go back to our notebook just now. OK, so. See, you, so you can click again the class notebook and when you click the navigation pane here. OK, um, it's a bit lagging. All right, click the show navigation. You can see I have one student here. So um, it depends. Huh? You have many students. Um, you've got 10 people inside, then 10 people is going to have their own notebook. Is there any difference between assignments embedded in one note? or as a tab itself no as long as it's linked to the same file uh, so if you want to use the assignment embedded in one node then they will have to open the one node right but if you want to put the assignment into teams then they will act to access as a tab there right but um, it's up to you actually if you don't want to put the assignment in one node you want to put it as a tab it's fine uh, either way it works fine all right so you have four spaces here as what i mentioned earlier so you have collaboration space. So this section is where you can edit, your students can edit, your members can edit, right? So if I click this collaboration space, um, you have the first one using the collaboration space. Now, this is what we call a section, a section. So just now uh, Hafiz asked, can I tamba section? Yes, you can tamba section. This is what we call a section, right? And this column here is the pages. This is the pages. So you can add as many pages as you want, and you can add as many sections as you want. So imagine this digital mode notebook with something like this. Um, so it looks something like like this. We are used to seeing a digital mode notebook. Eh, sorry, we are used to seeing a physical notebook like this, right? So in one note, the section is like this. This this color. You have orange, pink, blue, and purple. These are called sections. And under each sections, you have pages, right? So this is a hard copy notebook. So in a digital form, one note, the sections are these color codes and these are the pages within the section. So uh, you can add as many, uh, you, can add, you can create the section. So now you have using the collaboration. So you can click add section right at the bottom here. Click add section, right? So now you can put uh, the section maybe uh, week or uh, maybe class one. Class one activity. So remember that this section is you can edit and the students can edit. So maybe class one activity topic on uh, Microsoft 365, for example, and click OK. So what happens here? You will see that a new <coughs> sorry, a new section has been created. Class one activity. Um, 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 if you click this one, you have uh, introduction to uh, Microsoft Teams, right? So a new section right now. If you can even right click and you can even rename the section if you want topic on Microsoft 365 or you can even change the color, right? So you can change the section color. So this is orange. You can even change it to maybe green color is up to you huh? after your preference. So now you have a section here. Now within the section you have page. So is for example, you have an untitled page here. So you want to put a topic here. So uh, maybe what is Microsoft 365? Ah, so maybe uh, in this case, what is Microsoft 365? Okay, so you have a page here. So this whole page 
is actually limitless. Huh? You you can scroll as many down as you want. Huh? So what is Microsoft 365? Or maybe I'm just going to put what is Microsoft OneNote to make it better for our session this morning. All right. And then here um, you will notice that it's been renamed. Right. So you name this Microsoft OneNote. This is automatically renamed. Huh, to Microsoft OneNote. So you can create as many pages as you want. So this is a page that has already been created for you automatic. Now you can even add page. So you click add page and you can put a new page. What is Microsoft OneNote? How to, or maybe you can put functions of Microsoft OneNote. Okay, so you have a second page now. So you notice that I have a first page. This one, second page, this one. So remember, it's parked under where? It's parked under collaboration space. So if all the members of this group can together edit this document at the same time, right? So this is on uh, sections, how to create sections. This is on how to create pages, okay? So this is collaboration space. You can edit as the owner. Your students and members can edit as the uh, participants, right? Now, content library, same thing. You can create your own sections. You can create your own pages, but content library is reserved to only you as the owner. Only you can edit. The rest can only view the materials. They can only view. Huh? They cannot edit, right? So you can create content library. Teacher only is your personal notebook, huh? your own personal notebook. So you want to use this and create as many sections as you want. You want to create as many pages as you want. You can do that. And this is your own student's notebook, right? So your own students, these are the sections that we created earlier. Remember when we create a notebook? So we have quizzes, you have assignments, you have class materials, right? Uh, so these are each of your student will have the section that you created earlier when before we create the notebook, they, they have the student notebook. You have to put the section you want, right? So this is the section for each student. So this is the default section you have already renamed and uh, you already created for that, right? So each student will have these three section. Okay, I will talk about this later on. Yeah. Now let's look at the collaboration space, this one. So same like Microsoft Word, you can just do anything you want. So for example, like now I can type just a normal word. This is a very cool digital notebook. This is a very cool digital notebook. So same thing, you just type like a normal page. Now you can um, even highlight this whole thing. You can make it bold, you can increase the size you want, you can change the font you want. But one thing is, uh, what is so different this compared to Microsoft Word is you can move it around. So you just click, you can see that you have like a box here, right? So you click and you can place it anywhere you want. Right? So if I want to place it here, I also can place it here. Huh? Tapaya, we put tap, 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 Microsoft Word, huh? you want to put it here, you have to tap, 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 right? Um, or you want to move the margin on top. So this one, you can just navigate, you can put anywhere you want. You want to put it at the bottom also can. So for example, this is a cool digital notebook. So you can easily type huh? any text you want. Huh? Now, the next thing you can do, you can also insert pictures. Uh, can student, uh, there's a question in the chat can okay, student page can add in like photo attachment yes they can uh, so latimin uh, in your student notebook they can edit this is their private notebook right they can like for example meow ing uh, you have quizzes you have assignment you have class materials right they can do anything they want they, they can create their own page and they can create their own sections and they can do anything they want huh? they can even change the color it is it's up to them there is their own notebook, right? They can add photo and attachment and all this. Huh? So it's not a problem. Okay. So now if I go to here, okay, this is a very cool notebook, right? Now you can even insert images. It's very simple. Just click insert. Uh, you have image here. So you can put a drop down. You can either search for the image online or you can take an image using your camera now. So or you can even take it from a file. So I'm going to take the image from a file. So you're going to get a box here. So choose file. Okay, and then I'm maybe I'm going to choose this picture here and eh? click insert. Okay, so you have the picture being loaded here, right? So once the picture load um, is going to be in your Microsoft OneNote. Huh? So now, for example, this one, 
is here so I, I can also move it around anywhere I want okay and then here on top of that uh, you can even resize right you can even resize as you want you want to make it big you want to make it small and if you want to move it in any other sections you can also do that all right okay just a moment now huh? let me see okay okay yeah it's here so you can see that is you can put it right at the side or you can put right at the, at the bottom anywhere yeah so i'm going to place it here this is how you insert a picture right so we have learned how to type for the text you can put a picture next what you can do you can even put a hyperlink so i'm going to put insert okay and i'm going to put a link right so maybe this one read more about microsoft one note here okay read more about microsoft one note here right uh, then you can put the address so here you can link it um, to a, a website for example so you go uh, microsoft one note okay so maybe this is a website on microsoft one note right so you can just copy the url and uh, paste it here paste the whole address so you can link it to any website you want click insert so this is how it's going to appear um, to the uh, uh, members of your group so it's going to see read more about microsoft one note here so, so they can click this okay and when they click this it goes to the website so as easy as that you can put hyperlink you can put picture you can put text right and on top of that you can even record your own audio so let's say that you want to give some explanation uh, to members of the one note book right you want to give some explanation you can also do that so how i'm going to click audio right um so click audio and what is going to happen is going to start recording whatever i'm talking now uh, microsoft one note is recording my voice so you can see that it's recording right and it's recording in an mp3 format now if i want to stop the recording i can click stop and what happens once you stop recording is going to buffer whatever that you have spoken and it's going to appear as a mp3 file there you go right so now you can place it here and maybe you can put another text here uh, click the audio file to uh, uh, listen more about what is microsoft OneNote. so they are hearing your voice right so you can even put as easy as an eh, audio file can we set a due date example for the assignment? Uh, yes, you can set a due date. It's not a problem. Huh? Um, that one uh, you can put uh, here. I'm going to show you how to um, distribute assignments in OneNote. OK, um, if I show you one example how to distribute the notes, you can distribute it to the assignment folder. OK, but due date uh, because this uh, workshop is a combination of educators and admin right so there will be a workshop that is very specific to educators right and teams uh, allows you to create due date for assignments right you can even create quiz using teams huh? but that one will take a bit more time so uh, Nurul, i can share with you um, the link for that uh, you can create assignments using teams and set the due date and time and all this for that all right okay so now here you can see that i've inserted a note Hey, sorry i've sent, inserted a text i've inserted a picture i've inserted a link here and i've inserted a audio file okay so now you will notice that this page is here right what is in microsoft OneNote, right so anyone can access i can also have the option here um, if you want to change this page color you can also change the page color maybe it's a little bit boring for you here white color you just go to class notebook okay and oh, sorry not class notebook you go to uh view yeah you go to view click view and click page color so you can change the page color as you want so if i change this one it's going to change to pink color for example or you want to change to uh, other colors it's going to change but just bear in mind when you change the color it's only changing the color for this page the other page is still uh white color right so you can change the color you want so now i have a nice orange colorish uh, background here uh, together with this now i can share uh, now i can share the uh, uh, the page so how am i going to share it you click class one note here and click 
distribute page. Distribute page, right? So distribute page, okay? And you can see individual distribution means that you want to distribute only to a particular person, right? Or group distribution, you want to distribute to a group of people. But I will suggest that you want to distribute to all, you just put distribute page, right? And you're going to get this um, option here. Something is going to load on your right, right? So now you want to distribute this page to where? So this is your student notebook. You have assignments, you have class materials, you have quizzes, right? So I want to distribute to class materials, uh, to my student's notebook. So I'm going to click class materials and I'm going to click distribute. Okay, so what happens once you click distribute? Um, it's going to distribute this page that I've done into my members individual notebook. So you can see that is distributing to all students, okay, the class materials. Huh? So it's at zero percent. Okay, so now you can see that it's done, right? It's done, right? So now if I go to uh, my student notebook here and I click Tan Miao Ing and I go to class material, uh, you will see that this page, what is Microsoft OneNote? So you click this, you can see that she has the note that I have distributed. So this is how easy it is. So you use Microsoft OneNote, you can create any page, put whatever notes you want, and then distribute page and all your members and all your students are going to receive the same page. So this is as easy as that. So no need to email, no need to uh, 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 put it somewhere, you know, you, you can just distribute like this and they can always access this. Uh, and they can, this is their own personal notebook, they can access and they can put whatever notes they want. So you want to distribute quiz, you can also do that. Huh? You can create a quiz page and distribute the quiz and your student can answer the quiz here in their own personal notebook and you can mark it. You can mark it and nobody else can see. Nobody else can see. No other students can see. Only the student Tan Miao Ying can see what you have written. Uh, Gita say no need to upload in Spectrum. Huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you you still have to use Spectrum. Huh? You still have to use Spectrum. Huh? So don't don't forget. Huh? I uh, this is where I said the institution I gave training closed the learning management system. They closed down the Moodle. I I was shocked. Okay, uh, I didn't anticipate that. Huh? but please bear in mind in UM you we still need Spectrum. It's linked to our KPI. Yeah. Huh? So uh, Dr. Zai has shared this morning that yeah, they are try they will integrate and huh? they're going to link spectrum and this together okay uh yes uh, uh Yifang, students can only see the quizzes assignments and class matrix when they lock in huh? when they lock into the one note they can see this all right so uh yeah you can even the last thing i want to show you uh, before we move on to the next one um you can even print this huh? it's, it's quite simple as this just go to file and you can print it Right, you can print this page and you can even save it as a PDF. Huh? You can even document it as a PDF. For the quiz purpose, can we set the marking? Oh, no, uh, not through OneNote. Huh? Irene, uh, that you want to mark uh, automatically, you can uh, use Microsoft Forms. Huh? Microsoft Forms has some cool features which you can mark automatically. Huh? Uh, I can share on that, but uh, this workshop, we don't cover Microsoft Forms. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so that's about it um, about Microsoft OneNote. Do you all have any questions um, on this? So you even have the draw option. Um, you can even draw. Uh, you want to use the pen option and all this. So you can even annotate and you want to draw anything, especially those who are from the science and mathematics background. Uh, you might want to use this. Um, so, so you can draw and anything and uh, use this as OneNote. Yeah? So Gita, yes, Gita, you have a question. Um, Maybe you want to unmute, eh, Gita? Gita, you want to ask a question? You can go ahead. Uh, if anyone have question, can you just unmute your mic? Uh, yes, doctor. Um, doctor, I have a question. Um, just now, right, uh, when we distribute the pages, so the students will get their own worksheet to be done individually but uh, how if i want to distribute the page but uh the same page to be collaborated mm. 
if you want to distribute the same page to be collaborated, we put the navigation pane. This is what you call navigation pane. Huh? Click navigation pane, you have to put it under collaboration space. Collaboration space, you can edit, the students can edit. They can collaborate together here. Okay. Doctor, I have another question. Uh, just go, going back to the same thing. So if I put it there, everyone can collaborate. Then let's say if I distribute it, then everyone gets a page. And at the same time, if they come back to the collaboration space, the page is still available there, is it? Yes, it's, it? Still, it's, it's still available here. Okay? Um, for example, I've already distributed the class materials, right? The page is here. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Under the class activity, is is still here. What is one note? So it, it, it won't move. It's still here. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Uh, Zurani, can we set a due date example uh, for the assignment? Yes, you can do that, but that will be the assignment feature in Teams. Uh, uh, in in uh, You can set that reminder in Teams, uh, uh, but that one um, it has an extended feature. Actually, Teams for educator, you can do much more. There's a, quite a lot of functions I didn't cover on Teams for educators. Uh, for example, breakout rooms and all this. Uh, I didn't cover this because this workshop is a combination of two groups, administrators and also educators. Uh, will the students be informed through email when anything is being? No, they don't get this notification. So they will have to check um, on that. Uh, maybe you can just send them a Teams message and say that, you know, there's an update in the notebook. Please check. All right. All right. So I think that's it about uh, Microsoft OneNote. Uh, so I think we move on to the last one. Wow, it's already going to be 12 30. <laughs> Goodness, the time passed so fast. Okay, how to delete a uh, OneNote? How to delete a OneNote? Uh, what do you mean by this code? You, if you want to delete the pages, you can delete like this. Just right click um, any of this page here, right click, and then you can just delete the section or delete the page. Oh, uh, Dr. Adams, can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, 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 Mr. Cole. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just trying the version on um, outside teams, huh? you know, the, the standalone one. All right. Just like Excel and all that. Yeah. Uh, so I've done some scribbling. How, how do I undo or, or remove all those things I when I, after experimenting it? Ken, uh, you, you have, if you've done the scribbling, you have the eraser here. You see the eraser option? You can just use the eraser to erase right. whatever that you have done. Or you can delete that page altogether. Oh, so I, I, I cannot delete the file, is it? No, you can. Just go to the page here, this page, right click, and then delete page. Okay, I'll try. Thank you. Huh? Okay, try. Yeah. Um, Tengku say, if you have distributed the page, any additional notes added by students will not be updated. In the If you have distributed the page, any additional notes added by students will not be updated. In the yes, you are absolutely right, uh, Tengku. So once you have distributed the page, it's in their personal notebook. So whatever notes or whatever they write cannot be seen by others because it's their own digital notebook. If you want them to uh, have the updates, then you have to update in the uh, collaboration space and distribute the page again. Then they will have the latest update. All right. But uh, whatever they, they update in their own notebook cannot be viewed by others because that's their own notebook. Okay, Ri, you have a question, Ri? Hello, hello, Dr. Doni. Yes, yes. Uh, this is Li. Yeah, uh, yeah, one question. Uh, through my experience, the semester I asked students to do mapping on one note at the same time together. But the problem is that, uh, yeah, because they they don't some of them don't have uh, didn't have a good internet connection. When mm. you put the, the vocabularies at the same time, uh, something some words miss, missing and yeah, they said it was not convenient to put uh, vocabularies words at the same time. So I'm wondering, uh, it's a, it's one not suitable for this kind of way, or I should use like other whiteboard tools like Miro, Miro. Uh, what, what is the intention? You want them to um, work on a document uh, together? Uh, no, uh, vocabulary mapping. 
yeah, it's uh, the, uh, I'm teaching Japanese, so for okay. instance, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for instance, uh, related, okay, let's say the school, the topic is the school, and then uh, I ask them to put uh, any words related to the schools. <laughs> right, right. Okay, yeah, it's okay. A, I can yeah. understand. Uh, no problem. If you find using OneNote is lagging, I would suggest that you use the other option. You go to Microsoft Teams, um, you have the uh, channel, you can create through a channel or you go to general, you upload the uh, files here. So, for example, if you have a Microsoft Word file uh, like this and all of them can click this file and they can edit together um, at the same time. So this will have lesser uh, lagging than uh, Microsoft OneNote. But but uh, on Word, it's not uh, easy to change change the location, right? It's like, yeah, uh, one note. Uh, students can move anywhere. Okay. Hmm? Students can move the words anywhere. They yeah. Can, yeah. They ah, are, yeah, right, right. Yeah. I get what you mean. I get. Yes, yes, yes. Because Microsoft, if you open through Microsoft Word, then you have that Microsoft Word uh, system where it's difficult. Then I would suggest that if you want to do this kind of activity, um, you can link it with other applications. For example, you have Miro Board, right? Miro Board mm -hmm. would be the perfect one. So you just add a tab here and link Miro Board to your class. Uh, mm -hmm. That will be a more appropriate tool. So sometimes it depends on the tools that we need for our teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. uh, Gita uh, is yeah. Gita Google is also suggested. Mm, yeah. yeah, I was thinking also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gita okay. is suggested Google Jamboard lah, but I we are teaching on Microsoft lah today. Mm. Ah, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can use Google Jamboard. You can link also. Ah, not a problem. Uh, Google Jamboard is not inside here. Okay, you can click the plus point here. Um, but you can link it as a link. Ah, <laughs> no, no problem, Gita. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so you can yeah. put it as a website. Uh, you have the Google Jamboard link, right? Uh, click website and you put the Google Jamboard link here. So maybe you can put uh, Google Jamboard. So this is like one thing nice about Microsoft Teams. Uh, you can just link any application. Put Google Jamboard and you paste the link here, URL. And then it's going to come out as a tab here. Uh, so you can um, open through Google Jamboard. Or you can use MiroBot. MiroBot is under Microsoft. Uh, huh? Okay, so I, I rather that we, if you do a training on Microsoft, I rather focus on Microsoft, uh, 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 but there are other applications as well. If I do redistribute a student edited version, the override or uh, loss, uh, I have not particularly tried that, Hamisa, but um, I would suggest that if you're going to redistribute, I would suggest that you rename the page first, uh, just to be safe. I, I, I have not tried. Uh, redistributing with the same name uh, and if they have edited will it be lost I've not tried that so I would suggest to rename the file uh, to make it safe okay will there be another webinar for educators soon because we like to explore more for example setting due date yes uh, we can communicate this through edX and uh, maybe edX can um, organize a, a webinar for you um, on this, uh, um, the educator one has much more. Uh, educator is much more, but unfortunately, uh, we have to cater to two groups of people um, today. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Microsoft Sway um, because uh, in the concern of time, I'm just going to show you uh, very fast. So you can just observe how it's done, and you can create your own Sway. Yeah. Uh, so just for the uh, uh, for the concern of time. Yeah. So. To access Microsoft Sway, uh, you can just look at the applications at the side here. Okay, you have Sway, right? And then, or you can open the grid here, you have Sway, right? So I'm going to show you just a very simple presentation what you can do on Microsoft Sway. Eh? Um, ideally, I would like you to be hands-on, but uh, in the concern of time, eh? in the interest of time. Um, so you can just observe and you can see how fast you can do a presentation. So I'm going to click Sway. All right, and you're going to get this. You can choose from a template and you or you want to uh, create from a new blank uh, page. I'm going to click a new blank page, right? So it's going to open to Microsoft Sway. This is what uh, we call the heading card. You can put a title here. So for example, I'm going to put who, who am I? This is a, a, a title, huh? who, who am I? Now you have a, 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 a option to put a picture. You can click this picture and you can search. This is linked to Bing 
Google search, ah, uh, uh, eh, Google search. Bing search engine, ah, uh, Bing is different than Google engine, ah. Uh, so Bing is under Microsoft. So this is linked to Bing. So you can search an image, or if you have an image, you can upload. So you can click this drop down menu here. You can upload from one drive, or you can upload from your computer, right? Um, so here in this case, I'm just going to search for an image in Bing. Um, who am I? And you can see there's few options. So I'm just going to double click this one. All right. And then click add. So it's going to add here. Who am I? Now I can also um, add more um, cards, uh, more cards. So for example, I am uh, here emphasize is basically bold. You want to make it bold. You want to make it italic. So we have given feedback to Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft uh, you have Word PowerPoint. We call it bold, uh, uh, but I don't know why sway they call it emphasize. Uh, uh, so we, we told them just make it the same thing. Uh, emphasize or essence, right? So uh, you can bold it like this and then you click a plus sign. You have few options. You want to create another title card or you want to create a text. So in this case, I want to explain who am I. So I'm just going to click a text here. OK, I am uh, Donny Adams. I work at the um, University of uh, Malaya. OK, and then um, let's say, uh, OK, I love my job very much. Ah, simple. Huh? You can see whether my KG is online or not. OK, I love my job very much. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then here you can uh, put a bowl, for example. All right. Now, the next thing is you can create more um, image card. So I have created a text card. Now I will create an image card. You can click an image card, right? So here you can put uh, what do what do I love, for example, what do I love, right? And you can put bold and um, here you can even focus on uh, how big you want uh, that image to be. So here is small, medium and large. So I'm going to put medium here. What do I love? And you can click for an image here. So when you click this image, um, you can begin to um, search what image you want. Uh, what do I love? So what do I love? For example, you can search here. Uh, all right. So maybe this card I can add in so you can see what do I love. Now you can create more cards under that. So I'm going to create one. I'm going to create two and I'm going to create three image cards, right? So, I, for example, what do I love? So, I'm going to explain. I love my dog, for example. Huh? And you can even put an image here. I love my dog. Okay, so I'm going to put, try to find a, a picture of my dog here. Okay, so this is how the, 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 the guy looks like. Okay, and then maybe I love burgers. Okay, then I'm going to find an image of a burger here. All right. Uh, yeah, just about lunchtime. Huh? So just nice. Put an image of burger here. OK, and then I love reading books. Okay, So now you can find an image of books here. All right, so ready, right? So you have three image card. Now you can even cluster it together. So you can present it as a film one by one. Yeah, so for example, I'm going to put uh, emphasis, I'm going to put this as medium. This one, I'm going to put it as medium. This one, I'm going to put it as medium. Now, I'm going to click back this card and I'm going to click tick. One, two, three. So three clocks are uh, ticked together and I'm going to click the option group. When you click option group, um, Sui is going to ask you how you want to group the image together. So you can put it as a stack, you can put it as a grid. So in this case, I'm going to put it as a stack. Right. So more or less your sway is a simple presentation I'm doing. So how does it look like now? I'm going to click play. Here. OK, and you see that this is how the presentation looks like. So the who am I is here. You have the image here. And then if you just scroll, this is left to right using your mouse. OK, I am uh, the description is here. You have a picture. Now this is the picture you have. So you can one, two, three, and you can just talk about it. Right, you can just talk about it, right? So the whole idea of Sway is to focus on the, uh, is you to focus on the content, not to worry about the format. Because a lot of time when we do presentation, we worry about the format. What is the font size? What is the color? Where to put the position and all this. So the idea of Sway is for you to spend more time on the content and worry less about the format. So if in this case, you can see that 
Sway has formatted the presentation for you, okay, in, uh, uh, in, in a very simple way, right? And you can see that you can now come up with a very interesting presentation. And my time was not about adjusting how big and what color the font is and all this. My time was actually spent on the content itself, right? So here you have a simple um, presentation. You can even change the design. So if you click the design here, click design, Okay, and then you have your far right, you have styles. Far right, click design. Far right, you have styles. So you click styles. What is the styles? You can change it from left to right, or you can change it from up to down. So for example, I click to up to down. You can even go from up to down like this, or you want to go from left to right. It's up to you. Or you can even put it in slide form. So this is a matter of slide form. So you have to click this one for slide form so it's up to you how you want it yeah so in this case i'm just going to put it as horizontal now this is the magic of um, sway you can just simply select any of the templates here and sway is going to design it for you so for example i click this you can see it's a different design now right if i click this one uh, it's a different design now you can see that the font size is all has changed so you can change if you've got time um, you can slowly select what design you want here. You can even select a background you want like this, right? But if you don't have time, right? The idea of Sway is for the software to design for you. You focus on the content. You can just click Remix. Remix. Okay? So click Remix. Once you click Remix, you will see that Sway has designed for you uh, the presentation. So you can see that this has changed. Now, if you click again Remix, you will see it has changed again. So you can continuously click Remix. It's going to come out different, different design until you come to a design that you like. So this is the font size. If I click Remix, you can see it has changed again. Now it's come down to up. So you can continuously click Remix until you come to a design that you like. Then you are ready to present. So you want to present, you click Play, right? And then you are ready to present your suite. Right. So if you do it properly, uh, you are going to get something like this. OK, let me let me just share uh, this one so you get an idea. Uh, I'm just giving you something that is very simple. Huh? It's very simple. But if you really do it nicely, it's going to come out something like this. OK, you I'm shared the link in your chat. Right. So you can uh, open that link. OK, I'm going to share that screen here as well. Ah, so this is an example of a uh, Microsoft Sway presentation, right? Uh, how to turn a teacher into a one note ninja. So can you see this is an example huh? how to turn uh, this is using Microsoft Sway. how to turn a teacher into a one note ninja. So you can see the journey begins. So put a large picture. You can put text here. OK, and you have multiple pictures here. You can even Tilt the picture a bit here like this. You can integrate a video very easily. You can integrate an audio. OK, and you have some pictures. You can have multiple videos all at the same time. And what I'm doing, I'm just scrolling uh, from top to down. See, so these are an example of a Microsoft Sway. So this one, for example, is a stack, right? You can present, right? Uh, so this is something you can use for Microsoft Sway. This is a sample I'm showing you. So I've done something that is very straightforward and very simple in Microsoft Sway. Um, so if you have the time, um, you can always do your own Sway. Yeah? So as what I told you earlier, uh, when I finish uh, doing training on Microsoft Sway, most of the students and lecturers are using Microsoft Sway. They have forgotten what is PowerPoint, right? And there is a question here um, in the slide. Um, how about uh, existing slide? Huh? If you have an existing slide, you can also convert it into a suite, right? So you click this grid here. It's going to bring you back to uh, Microsoft Sway. OK, so let's say you open a Microsoft Sway here. So just now I click new blank Sway, right? Now you can put start from a document, start from a document. So if you click start from a document, you can upload your existing PowerPoint into here and you'll be converted into a Sway. And then you can click the remix button is going to redesign for you the uh, PowerPoint. So you have an empty PowerPoint or you just have a black and white PowerPoint. You can upload inside here and Sway will redesign for you. But just bear in mind, Sway 
is a cloud-based software. It's not like PowerPoint where you can save the file in the thumb drive or hard drive or store it uh, or, or you know bring it anywhere in, in your computer. If you want to access Sway, you have to have an internet connection because it's stored in the cloud. Uh, the Sway is in the cloud, it's online. So you have an internet connection, then you can access your Sway. That is the only disadvantage. Other than that, it's a fantastic application. All right. Okay, so I've come to the end of uh, Microsoft Sway. Do you all have any questions? Anything you all want to ask about Microsoft Sway? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gita, yeah. I yeah, have Gita. a question. Yeah. So once I've done in Sway, right, and let's see if I want to pass the notes to my students, right? How do I uh, do it? Can I save it as handouts like how uh, we uh, used to do in PPT, PowerPoint? Okay, you can share it this way. Uh, if you have Microsoft Sway here, you if you want to share it as a handout, you can click this one. You can print, okay, print, and you can save it as a PDF, right? Or you can even print it and uh, as a hard copy and give your student. Or if you want them to view it online, you can also do that. Click share, right? And then anyone with a link. I was always suggest to use this one. Anyone with a link because. Those in your organization, unless they are locked into Microsoft 365 account, they can view it. Otherwise, they cannot view it. Huh? So those who are using Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, they might not be able to access. So if you put anyone with a link, don't forget to only put view. Huh? You click edit, God bless you. <laughs> they can edit your entire sway huh? and they can make it their own. So always put view. It's by default view. So you copy this link and share it to your students um, through the chat or you want to share it through Spectrum, um, you can put it there, okay, as a PowerPoint note. So you can even encourage your students to use um, Sweet. So they spend time on the content rather than wasting time on the format. All right, any other questions you all have on this? I've come to the end already. Sorry, uh, because I wanted to do a hands-on session with Sway so that you all can do it together and create a Sway, but Mm, uh, timing a bit larry really so i'm very sorry for that huh? timing run a bit do you all have any questions on this uh if you have any question you can just unmute your mic perhaps next time we can do a little bit longer dr Dhani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> next time we can do a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, uh, I think the Teams module was uh, a bit too heavy this morning. Uh, too many questions. Um, but it's okay. It's, it's a good thing. The, uh, many questions is good. Right. Uh, I guess there's no question coming for now. Um, let's check the chat area. Uh, yes, uh, the attendance will be given by Microsoft Teams after the session ends. Yeah, one thing um, good about Microsoft Teams is once you end the meeting, uh, the Excel of the attendance will be there. You can just download. Uh, you can just download from there. Uh, in the chat itself, it will come up there. Okay, you can just download. Um, yeah, but uh, I think uh, for webinar, I I'm not sure if it's apply the same to meeting, but it is only available to the organizer to download. Mm, uh, yes, the right. attendance report is only for the meeting host, the for organizer. The uh, so your students cannot access. Lah. That's one thing good uh, for that. Or during the meeting itself, you can download. Uh, if I can share my screen just quickly to show, um, it won't oh, be sure. visible. Uh, it won't be visible because um, uh, I'm not the organizer. I'm a participant for the meeting. but. For you to download the attendance report as an organizer, you click the participants list here. Um, you have this three dot. Oh, I think I can. Oh, no, I cannot. Uh, you have the three dots here and you can download. You will have uh, download the attendance here, right? Okay. Or you can wait for the end and you can download also. It's either way is fine. Um, last time I created a folder. Okay, I think Hasnatol has... Uh, created a folder in the files. However, when I rename the folder, all files, ha, huh, all files disappeared. I need to go back to my SharePoint to review. Is there any other way? Mm, I have not particularly encountered this problem. How come uh, when you rename the files disappeared? Huh? Uh, this seems to be a very unique case. Um, Asnato, I, I have not encountered. Usually when you rename, you will not have that problem. But Thankfully, you have SharePoint. So if you can link it to SharePoint, uh, that will be a good way to uh, retrieve it. Okay. But usually this is quite odd. Huh? I, mean, I never encountered this before. Uh, so Chu says, is there any way for me to download attendance a few days, weeks? Yes, the attendance report is there. 
right um you you can even retrieve it like for now uh what i've done is um uh, uh yeah something to share with you all educators huh? i maybe you have faced this uh, problem maybe you are not faced this problem um i do not uh, know lah, but i'm sharing from my experience um i take attendance using the qr code in spectrum um so i create a qr code in spectrum and students log into spectrum and scan their attendance using the qr code right and then they join the online class but what i have noticed that there have been some incidences where the student didn't join the online class and they just scan their qr code showing that they have attended the class in spectrum so you might want to cross check the attendance report during the online class that is very important don't just rely on the qr code in spectrum so download the attendance report and the attendance report will be available in the chat right so sometimes you can just start a meeting like this uh, without your students and you can see the attendance report is on the top you can download from there but you have to click the same link okay two i hope it helps okay any other questions um okay i think if there's no other questions so i thank you everyone uh for for this morning um my apologies for slightly overshooting the time we are supposed to end at 12 30 we're ending at 12 47 so my apologies and i thank you very much uh, and i hope that this session is very useful for all of you and i wish you all the best in using uh microsoft teams sway and OneNote. and please please uh, feel free to drop me any um um if you have any concerns any uh any any help you need any assistance feel free to drop me an email uh, so I, I will type my email here and uh, i'm more than happy uh, to assist you in any of your query yeah? uh, because uh, teaching educational technology is a joy and my passion right so thank you everyone and i will surrender the session back to um, edec thank you uh, yeah most importantly thank you also to edec uh, for inviting me to give this workshop so thank you miss omo thank you edec team thank you all right thank you dr Dani, and thank you participants uh, I think we have a great session today. Uh, although uh, we're running out of time, <laughs> but I guess um, that means we will invite you again, maybe next month or you know next week maybe. Okay. Um, thank you again, Dr. Dani. Uh, maybe after this we can, um, you know, just talk uh, or discuss about an upcoming uh, training program. Also to the participants, um, there's a feedback form link available for you. So if you have any particular module or features or apps that you would like to learn uh, from Dr. Doni or any other train e-learning trainer that we have, you can just um, drop the suggestion and we'll take a look at it. Thank you. Um, also another thing about your attendance, uh, don't worry. Um, after we end this session, Microsoft Teams will give me the report of the attendance and I will have the data uploaded in System Latihan so it will appear in your portal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you everyone. All the best, yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Doni. It was thank you. Uh, very Informative, especially the last two. Thank you, uh, Adek. It's a great session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Doni. Thanks, Umu. Dr. Doni, thanks, Umu. You can you, you can, can see so many virtual so many virtual <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, th uh, thank okay. you, Umu, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Have you tried webinar before? Uh, no, I I only try the live event and the meetings. Webinar, no. Uh, because I guess this is the this is the third time we are trying, but we're still learning about the features in it. Mm. Yeah.
Yeah, but I think that if it's going to be uh, because webinar, you can take up to uh, 1,000 uh, participants and also 2,000 people can observe. But kalau if right, the right. is if it's below 300, we can still use the uh, meeting function. You see, uh, right, uh, so it depends on on your your needs lah. Uh, but I think I either yeah. one works fine. Like today is is working fine, so it's not a problem lah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Umo. Thank you, Adek Team. Take care. All right.